Wood. We're recording. Um, this is your president uh, addressing the Santa Maria Camera Club on March the 3rd, 2021. Um, before we um, jump into our uh, program and um, images, I wanted to ask a question. Has anybody um, been out to evaluate how our um, spring flowers or blooms are going? We've, Larry and I saw some poppies on our way uh, to Santa Maria today, but uh, anybody been to Carrizo Plains? Just wondering. I think it's a bit early yet, but. We drove out, uh, we didn't go into Carrizo Plains, but we were, um, you know, right by the entrance at 166, and it was very dry there. Mm. Uh, no, no blooms yet at that end okay. of the plains anyway. We need rain, don't they? Oh, I think in the past, um, when I'm going on 166 through Cuyama, all that yellow on those mountains, if you're going to see it, it's like later, like about the third week in March is when I've seen it. But yeah, just thought I would ask anyway. Um, so just going to make a, um, a few announcements. Our competition um, is St. Patrick's Day, which is um, Wednesday, the March the 17th. And um, we will have a themed competition, which is reflections. And uh, Tony, who is our judge? Mark Velasquez. Okay. Mark a nice... It's all in the galleon. Yes, there's a nice article about him. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> describing uh, Mark's background. And he sounds like he's going to be a great um, <laughs> And uh, and then Penny, we have two uh, field trips pending for uh, March. Can you tell us about the Lighthouse and Pinnacles? Um, sure. Uh, <clears throat> the first one coming up is on the 19th. It's a Friday evening, um, going to the San Luis Obispo um, Lighthouse. Uh, for a photo shoot there with Bob Mihalik. Bob Ma Bob is a volunteer with the Lighthouse group there. Um, he does field trips for the school kids and, and so forth. Um, he's been doing that for, for a couple of years. So he's arranged uh, for a photographer's field trip. Um, so we're just kind of waiting and seeing if um, the people above will approve that kind of activity in, a, in the COVID situation that we have right now. So uh, as soon as there's information, um, there'll be an email going out to let people know either it's, it's called off, postponed, or uh, that it's gonna go forward. So Penny, hopefully it, it goes. Penny, I got an email, not um, you know from the people who sell tickets. And they yeah, were advertising that tour on that site. So well, they they really I, can't do that until they know for sure. But yeah, but I I just got that email with an advertisement for that tour to the lighthouse on that day. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's still still on until we get the no. So, yeah. Um. So that's just kind of up in limbo. Um. The other trip is um. On the 27th of uh, Saturday, uh, going up to Pinnacles National Park on the east east side, um, off of Highway 25. So I'm um, estimating that it's about a three mile drive, three hour drive um, to get there from Santa Maria. So it's an early start for some of you. Um, Ed and I are heading up the night before and camping there. We got reservations quite a while ago. Um, so we'll be meeting um, about nine o'clock within the park to do some hikes. Um, the caves are closed because of COVID, I do believe, although sometimes they're closed because of the bats. Uh, usually they're open by the late part of March if it's a bat closure. But I, it, right now it's a COVID closure, so I think. It can also be closed to the rainfall. Oh, yes, true. Okay, but we haven't had that, but they did up there quite a bit. Yeah, they so. did. 
they yeah, uh, i'm 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 hoping the flowers will be out there because they did get quite a bit more rain up in Monterey County than <laughs> than we have. Yeah, I would um, think the end of March should be really good for that trip. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Um, and so, just depending on how much you want to hike, yeah. um, there's a fairly easy route up to the reservoir that should be nice for reflections. Um, <laughs> And well, that's actually after. <laughs> Sorry, that's after. <laughs> yeah, that's <it's> after. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also some some new things that I have only learned about myself are they they have uh, two homesteads there um, near the eastern entrance that have old barns and and homes from the late 1800s there that are on display. So yeah, Penny, you said that there's uh, on the website, there's uh, directions on how to get there. I, I have yet to find that. So. Well, it's on. Um, uh, not recreation, the it's a national, the, uh, it's national park. Yeah. 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 The NPS.gov. Right. And right. if you go to pinnacles, uh -huh. then you can get info okay. about that. I'm not really good at making links, but maybe Ed can help but, me. Well, I, I just somewhere near San Ardo, you get off and you want to pick up 25, which goes to the eastern side. Uh huh. Okay. Of, of uh, the pinnacles and reconnects with the 101 farther north. Okay. Because so there's two entrances. There's an eastern entrance and a western entrance off the 101. Well, I'll look for it, and if I can't find it, then I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. I, I'll tell you how to get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. if you don't mind, Greg, go ahead and check out what the Park Service is saying, because I think they have it, have you going all the way up uh, pretty much into King City before you cut over. Yeah, that's, it's close to there, yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing that was up was Jim published a, uh, or shared with us some images of a forest with all these baby dolls and things hanging in it. I don't know how many of you saw those images. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've been bantering around the idea of ha having a <clears throat> what is it, a um, still life shoot in the Palmo Native <clears throat> Garden where we bring in our artifacts and set up. There's 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 deep forest oaks and things in the Native Garden. It's flat. It's easy to get to. Uh, it's uh, very. Uh, it, there's not a lot of traffic there. But That's we're a good talking idea. about going in there and setting up. Uh, everybody could come in as a team and set up shots uh, and uh, with their artifacts, their dolls, their statues, or they want to do. Now, we thought that would be a great field trip, and it's something we could. It's very close. In the end. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do that uh, this month or next month? Um, I'm thinking. Well, we already got a couple things in the menu. How about? <coughs> Yeah, April is probably a better a better time. And we've been playing around. You can go on the internet and find uh, animal masks. You can find the uh, the old uh, plague masks. Um, I've got a bunch of old dolls, stuffed animals, weird statues, those kinds of things. We're just thinking about creating an environment uh, for photo shoot within this oaken forest. Of things that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay. But not too creepy. No, yeah. no, it can't be. Too, it, it can't be any sexual or anything. There are there are mothers with children who wander through there, but usually they're not in the forest. They're down in the children's playground. And we were thinking late afternoon, the lighting's the best. So if people would come in around two, set up for an hour or so, stage whatever. And then as groups, we could walk around and try and do photo shoots until four or five. And then you got to take out everything you brought in. So kind of thinking like whimsy on the yes. order of whimsy, right? No, the, or, the, or the absurd. Yes, that's fine. Or if, if it's Halloween-y and kind of dark in nature, that's fine as long as it's not vulgar or, you know, atrocious. Yeah. Or too or creepy. Too yeah, we're too creepy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Pictures of me are pretty creepy. So, uh, <laughs> and, 
everybody's going to have so, own so idea Greg, what to set up, I'm sure. So, Greg, are you uh, going to coordinate with Penny on this to come up with a deal? Yeah, I will. I've been working with Jim and Tony about it. Perfect. I, I'm the uh, <coughs> volunteer coordinator for the Native Garden. <laughs> so. uh, awesome. And, well, and Rosie has the idea of going to uh, Sunny Acres up in, uh -huh. in San Luis Obispo uh, for machinery. Oh, off the Los Osos Valley Road? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so that would be great. Um, that's what that's Rosie, what the, whenever is a good time for you, we can coordinate that too. That's yeah, the next uh, I I've got the name of the person we need to get a hold of, and we just need to know about how many people would like to go. But they have a lot of machinery and stuff, cars and tractors, that kind of stuff out there. So that, that's the place on the right hand side with the big barn and in the. Cars, yes. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah we're, we're the guys been fighting with the county of San Luis Obispo for years over illegal housing and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, we what went there the, in 2010. I don't know if any of you. No. Uh, Elaine, did you guys go? Yeah. 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 Penny, did you go? No. You've never no. been there? No, I haven't. So that sounded really interesting. Yeah. Uh, even when the, we used to have. Um, the the photo uh, Thank you. festival that did, uh, light they took uh, a group out there. Yeah. Nice. There's uh -huh. a lot of stuff in the barns. Lots of yes. Lots of junk and memorabilia. There's uh, of course. old cars and trucks. And Wasn't there a or a duck or? There's a goose. I remember I took yeah. some pictures of something. Yeah, I can't remember. I can. Yeah, I barely. Remember that? Yeah, I kind of remember one. Greg, what Greg, month would this be in? Greg, did you what? see Chuck's note in the chat? No, I didn't. I don't have chat turned on. He says uh, if you if you're uh, mute now, uh, you can't unmute it. I sent him a request. There you go. Yeah, if you're, uh, 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 I usually <laughs> turn my mic off occasionally. This. <laughs> For outside noises, and now if I do that, you can't. I mean, I can't unmute okay. myself. All right. Well, I'll, I'll watch it. Got a solution to that. I did the same thing. So what I've done is gone to my settings, and now I just put my microphone input volume down to zero. I put it down to zero when mm -hmm. the dog starts barking. So you can do that instead of muting yourself. I could just unplug my mic. <laughs> Chuck, or you, you should be able to override that with the space bar. Oh, let me try that. Hold no. down the space bar. If you're muted, it oh. unmutes you. Let me get out of chat. Okay, I'm holding down the space bar. It doesn't look like I'm muted. You're, well, you're not muted. All right, let me mute Wait. you. Oops. Mute. Okay, now hold down your space bar. Can you talk? No. That means I'm God. I've overridden it. <laughs> <laughs> I think All this right. I think this space bar thing is if you click on mute, you can hold down the space bar like a push the talk button like a police dispatcher. Then when you let go of it, it mutes you again. But that yeah, it works the opposite way also, but uh not with the way Greg has set up. If the host has muted you, you can't override it. Yeah, you can't do anything. Oh well. <laughs> So just a heads up if you mute yourself up, <laughs> you're, you're locked. <laughs> so do my do my workaround. Go into your settings. If you go into uh, click on the right hand of where it says mute, and you've got the drop down, and then you go into settings, and then you go into speaker and microphone, and you can take your input volume down to zero on your microphone when you need that's, to. That's to true. Not be heard. I've been doing that a few times already because my dog's going wacko. So what kind of machinery is it at this place? Oh, it just has different things. Um, it's a variety of things. What, tractors and diggers and that sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, farm, farm tractors, equipment. Old, cars well, and old, old, tra tracks. old tractors, uh, abandoned, rusty cars, um, junk. Yeah, a, a lot of old, old stuff. <laughs> old, old cars that looks like they've been storage for a while. <laughs> yeah. 
we oh, went to, to interrupt Cheryl when we Dickens went in to get back in. Cheryl's muted now. Yeah, she was. She wants back, back in. And Flavio's muted. What month would we be I going need, up in? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> oh, I think right track. <laughs> Next month would be good because everything will be green out there. If we let it yeah. go too late, then it's kind of lots of stickers and stuff, probably. Stickers. Yeah. So in the fall, they usually sell pumpkins and stuff. I'm yes, that's when we pumpkins. went. But they usually sell pumpkins and yeah, things like that. So that. Where are we talking about? Sunny uh, Acres. What's it called? Sunny Acres. Yeah. So, uh, Rosie, would you coordinate with um, uh, Penny on uh, yeah. coming up with a date for that, and and uh, so we can uh, let you send out info on that, and we'll move along with our uh, program meeting for tonight. Uh, any other quick business before we um, I turn this over to Alan? I'm just wondering, does um, <clears throat> anyone, is anyone interested <clears throat> in a field trip to Gladaway to take pictures of gladiolus here in town? So the the deal with that was that um, Luis um, Escobar. Escobar has the relationship there, and he was going to wait until they actually had a um, crop. a crop. Uh, there isn't much up there, is because I've been checking it out. Um, but I think we should probably try to go through Luis to do that. I'm just wondering if he did anything about it. I'm seeing Gladiola's growing now in the fields. I'm not sure when they're going to bloom, but Where I think we should just start planning it. And put it on okay. The Let me, uh, I will make a note. I will email Luis. Okay. Okay. Because if, if he doesn't have time to do it, I'd be happy to, um, to talk to Gladaway. Well, great. I, it'd be nice since he's apparently, um, done work for them and has a, a ongoing relationship, um, to let him try and pave that way for us. But uh, if sometimes he's um, got his mind on other things. So uh, if not, I will get back to you, Jeannie. Okay, sounds good. All righty, anything else? Um, Cheryl, are you gonna do anything more with the... <clears throat> with what, what? The membership dues. Oh, yes. If you haven't paid your dues, this is your last chance. Um, you will not. <laughs> you will not be able to participate in uh, competitions uh, starting uh, this March. So uh, please pay your dues if you haven't. You're preaching to the choir. I, I have a feeling. Yes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, most of everybody here is, has paid it. I think it's the other people that. Rosie, if you would um, send me a list of who has not um, paid. Uh, who had previously been a member. Um, I'd like to, I'll probably go through that and make some calls and maybe delegate some other people to make calls. But if you'd send me that, that would be great. We, we should, don't call, we should just go over to their house with torches. Well, we could do that. That would, that would probably be much more effective. With those dolls. Yeah, we'll carry some creepy dolls with us. So we can toilet paper their houses until they're paid. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, any any other business? Uh, Greg, I noticed Bob's muted. I'm not sure if he wanted to say anything about the light. I sent him a couple of requests, and he's being quiet. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's turn it over to our DJ of the evening um, to introduce our program. <laughs> and please stay on after that because we have um, other images show and tell. Well, yeah. So uh, uh, last, I think it was October, Bernard, who has now become a member <laughs> of our club, had some really, really uh, interesting stuff that he showed uh, from the 1960s from uh, Liverpool and done a film and scanned. And uh, I will see him again. But uh, he's going to show uh, 20 of his images. Uh, and talk about them. This I don't know how many people were on the, the chat where he showed them, uh, but uh, they have interesting stories behind them, and they're really uh, uh, 
I think they're really interesting images. He had a couple in competition, which uh, I guess our last judge wasn't. Well, I, the one that, the one I liked is where he said he'd, he'd seen it before. Well, yeah, I'd seen it before. I saw it in a movie. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's so uh, anyway, I think uh, he's he's a. Uh, I think uh, the newest member of our club. Is that correct? Uh, maybe. Yes. Yes, he <laughs> is. Should be. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you. Hey. Thank you, Alan. Uh, uh, and, uh, thanks for the general encouragement. Uh, uh, stuff. I wish you were. You, you. We're done. I'm in uh, the holy city of Torrance. Torrance, okay. So. Torrance. It's a bit far away for me to join you on these field trips, <laughs> but. Um, who knows? There might be something down here on Redondo Pier you might like to go and see. <laughs> We've actually had uh, field trips that went south before. Oh, we you did? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, but Bernard, before you sign up for that, remember, we all crashed at your house the night before. Uh, yeah, the garden's pretty nice at this time of year. Uh, the cobbles aren't too uh, difficult to sleep on. <laughs> Where in Torrance do you live? Uh, do you know the old Daily Breeze building? Yeah. Uh -huh. I live uh, a stone's throw from there. Oh, okay. Uh, I used to, used to live near the courthouse. Oh, okay. Further east on Torrance yeah. Boulevard. Yeah. So um, it was a joy to see that lovely blue tiled building uh, every, you know, many times a week. But of course, the printing industry fell. Yeah. Like height and uh, the building area is now an extension of Little Company of Mary Hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's been put to a good use. That's good. Um, so uh, I moved there about 30 something years ago. And mm, okay. uh, the house was actually owned by my late wife's one of her piano students. And he was a, a Disney engineer and he was told he had to he, he was going to a new place up in Pasadena and he was going to move up there because the drive was just horrendous yeah so he asked would we like to buy the place and uh, I said not a bad idea um, so that's what happened and now you know I'm still there very <laughs> good um, and my two boys uh, just bought houses in the last few months actually um, because, you know, that's, that's the whole progression and it's frightening. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be in charge, but no longer. Uh, but anyway, um, the uh, Liverpool, as most people know, is a big industrial port, uh, opposite New York on, on the, on the Atlantic, uh, sailing route. And, um, there were lots of things happening in Liverpool for many years and it was, uh, you know, it was involved with the slave trade and a lot of merchants uh, made a lot of money out of it. And um, uh, there's a big fuss now about slave owners and all that. Well, Penny Lane, one of the Beatles' very popular songs, is a street that was named after Captain Penny. Um, and people used to seal the signs on a weekly basis, you know, Penny Lane. Uh, and then it was, there was a big fuss about, well, hang on, he's a, he's a slave owner. And in Liverpool, they said, hey, we recognize slavery. It stays up. And they've since built a, a museum to slavery, uh, which, um, you know, if you ever go to Liverpool, make sure you go and visit. There's another half a dozen great museums about sailing and shipbuilding and all sorts of stuff. I've got, so, a, I've got a room in my house. It's a museum for slavery. <laughs> we won't go any further with that, Jim. Is that the BDSM room? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, I grew up, uh, my dad was a customs officer, and on a Sunday afternoon, uh, he would take us out of the house because my mother and he had had eight children, and it gave my mother half a day off. Uh, or she didn't have to do anything, and then my dad would take, you know, a bunch of us out uh, to go around Liverpool or mystery trips, he called them. And uh, so it's actually very informative. And we used to go to the Walker Art Gallery, 
and we'd also have places that he had access to because he was a, a customs officer. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to look at <coughs> with all the bomb damage and the blitz. So it was always fascinating, and it gave me a thirst to uh, eventually come back and start taking pictures around the area. And so uh, I've got about 20 pictures here. So I will start. I will uh, share. Let's see if this works. You got them open already, right? I've got them. Yeah. Okay. So there's one, and I'm going to share it, and you should see it. We don't see it now. Okay. There, there you go. You see there you go. Uh -huh. Very good. So um, this is an area that was blasted the bits in World War II, and it's looking towards the docks. So we're on Everton Brow. Everton, if you're following soccer, is a Liverpool team. And um, so this this picture was used for the uh, of Prime and the City in, uh, as a poster, but they added along the skyline the city, the new city center of Liverpool. Uh, didn't agree to it, but I'd sold the rights, and so they did what they want with it. And, uh, but this was a very iconic picture, and it was actually the first photograph I ever sold in my life, um, because I took it in my last year at Liverpool Art School. Isn't it, isn't it still the only one you've ever sold? <laughs> <laughs> The hard sell comes at the end, Jim. <laughs> this was what year? Was this 1960-something? Uh, about 66, yeah, 67. And um, it's film, so it's Pryx or Ilford Pen or something like that. And there's actually another photograph I took on a different day with a removal van, like the current of Mayflower, and it's at the end of the street. But this one... Uh, so, because one of my buddies in the graph, I was doing graphics and photography. Uh, he was working for the for an agency that was doing that was promoting stories by the local newspaper, the Liverpool Echo, and the uh, the, the long running series of three weeks or something was called Goodbye Scotty or Scotland Road. That was the main street north of Liverpool that meandered up to Scotland. And it was one road, sorry, it was one it was half a mile for 72 pubs. So there was a very intense culture. And, um, 72 pubs in a half mile? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's one on every corner. You see what we're looking at now? We're looking at a street that was row houses with no front gardens, just a front door. And there was a rear uh, slab where you could lock up your bicycle at night. But there was no gardens. This is purely functional uh, uh, blue class, working class housing. But as you see, it's all been flattened. And it could have been either uh, German um, attempts to clean up the city or it could have been the local city council. And there was certainly a lot of activity in Liverpool with, with rebuilding. <coughs> and they knocked down thousands of houses to rebuild new blocks of flats. But it didn't work out because A, they ran out of money, and B, people used to living next to each other didn't like to walk up steps or have to deal with elevators that had been pissed in the night before by the local drunks. So the, the expression at the time was... Um, what the Luftwaffe failed to do, the city council finished off. <laughs> they just wrecked the place. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I hope this isn't too uh, wordy. Um, but I'm going to do another one now. Um, and uh, sorry, my, my window shrunk. I want to share this one. You've shared it. That's the fisherman. That's right. Close the other one out. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, but look, it's off the top. Oh, so stop sharing. Sure. 
Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. But you can all see the photograph of this man. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's on the back of a tugboat. Yeah, we can see him. <laughs> okay, great. And this was a, a neighbor who lived two doors down. It, well, he, he worked as a deckhand on this tugboat. And it was a, it was the last uh, coal fired st- uh, tugboat on the Mersey. And what you're looking at is across the River Mersey onto Birkenhead. And that's where my father landed aged about six or seven um, with his father, who had been a shipyard worker in Hove or Queens, uh, Queenstown in Southern Ireland. So he came to Birkenhead because there's a huge shipbuilding business on the other side of the river. And so my dad came here when he was about seven. And um, I got to know and like Liverpool because, you know, he always talked about good things. He was a positive guy. And this was a crewman on the tug. We were pu- we were pulling in a, t- a Polish freighter and he was dealing with all the ropes. And that big curved bar was where they had the main <coughs> um, rope. <coughs> we were, uh, there was two tugs uh, on this Polish freighter. And uh, you can see that the water is very rough out there because the tide's going in or coming in or going out at a very rapid pace. And I just saw the shape of his body and the roundness of his hat echoed in all these round shapes. So the minute I saw it, I thought, that's a good picture. So I'll move on to the next one, uh, which will... Close that. I'm surprised that he doesn't have gloves on. Mm. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> well, I guess they get they get tough. They get tough. Uh, okay. Probably grow up with burns, um, and that's evidence of the the trade, I suppose. Um, I'm going to put another one up. This is one you've seen before. You have to share again. Okay. Going up. Share. There it is. Sign share. It's not coming up. I wondered about sign share. I'll try it again. So it's showing up on the share content. Well, it's not showing on the screen. We can't see it. Okay. Well, I'll give it a little tickle. There you go. Okay, great. It's I can't see what you're seeing, so I'm slightly. Well, we're seeing the same thing. If we're looking at the 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 Liverpool boat with the guy standing on the back. Yes, it's a grain barge. Right. And that's the Kellogg's cornflake factory, uh, sucking or filling this barge with corn to make cornflakes. <laughs> and this guy floated in front of me. And I probably took about four frames. Because I'm using Phil. Okay. <laughs> With his mug of tea, and you see pneumatic elevator number twelve. Yeah. And those are grain. Has... Those are grain elevators, right? Say again. Grain elevators behind him. Behind, behind him, yeah. Yeah. And so these barges would come in in rows, <clears throat> and they had sucked out the <clears throat> contents of a grain ship from Canada or USA or wherever, um, in the early days, it would have, would have been from Russia. Um, so this guy happened to cruise by and I uh, had the camera under my coat because the cameras were forbidden. So I just got the camera out, focused it, guessed it was F8 at a week exposure. And uh, <laughs> this one, this one was in Ray Carafano's uh, gallery, am I right? Yes, it was, yeah. and he bought he bought one of these frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it really sums up the whole the whole series, actually. Bernard, this barge it looks like it's for local delivery only because the uh, bins, the grain bin coverage is canvas. It's not very watertight. That's right. So this would go from this grain elevator where a big ship had. Uh, stood there and had all the insides sucked out. And then it was taken locally to a place where it could be sucked out from the barge to um, 
wagons, you know, trucks, lorries, that sort of stuff, go for treatment at the cornflake plant, you know, wherever that was. Mm -hmm. um, but this was, but that, that, that sunlight on the dust, which is making this very atmospheric. Right. And, um, yeah. That dust is, that dust is highly explosive. Yes, it is actually. He's probably smoking a ciggy. <laughs> and we won't talk about the guy's black lung disease. Right. Uh, yeah, they had that with, um, there's a sugar, uh, refinery quite close by and every Friday night you'd see hundreds of the workers coming out and many of them worked in the icing sugar where the sugar was ground up very minutely and these guys were working there for eight hours and they didn't wear protective clothing or anything but they'd come out with white faces and white clothing their <laughs> ordinary jackets is and that where the uh, term sweetheart comes from <laughs> <laughs> hey, sure. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But that building, the the um, those big warehouses have all been knocked down now, and they've got uh, they all hung next to the Liverpool to Leeds Canal, which was um, a major achievement as it went up through the Pennines to Leeds, where there's a lot of manufacturing and stuff. So um, yeah, yeah. Dust in this picture from the corn, from the grain? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Was the dust in this picture from the grain? Because at pneumatic, it was being sucked up with a huge uh, uh, electrified pump or pneumatic. And the, um, the dust wasn't in a, a you know, a, a, a tight uh, uh, tubing. It was open. Uh, probably deliberate and so if you've ever been around grain on a farm you know it gets dusty and uh, so, so that's what the dust was from and the sunlight was just right it was about 11 o'clock in the morning and when i had the exhibition someone wrote in the catalog that their dad helped to weld that prominent pipe sticking up above the word liverpool <laughs> so, it's just one of those things that people remember details that nobody else cares to. <laughs> so we'll move on to another. And about, I don't move that over. So the next one uh, is, uh, we're going to get this one out and we're going to share this one. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, we you can see it. Good. Well, this is along, this is um, walking along the side of a dock. And these cranes, I think some of them could move, they're on wheels. And you can see the sh there's two ships you know, right next to each other. And below them, there's a, a tanker with some sort of oil. And uh, I'd worked on the docks and I could kind of talk a little bit the same language. You know, I could, I could speak in the local slang. It's good. It's trimmed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it gave me access to all this. He's a good looking. I guy. ended up actually climbing up into one of the, uh, the cranes okay. <laughs> because the crane driver invited me up. Hey, lad, do you want to get some photos from up here? So, yeah. He said, well, climb up the ladder. I mean, that wouldn't happen today. <laughs> <It doesn't. laughs> Wait. No, so that's um, you can see that, that the warehouse is right is along the right hand side, and um, yeah, it was kind of uh, again hide the camera. You didn't want to show it off. Um, and now we're going to go into um, the next photo, which is coming up. This one. Uh, I'm showing you a photograph that hasn't been spotted. Just to remind you, we're dealing with film here. <laughs> Here's how they were unloading ships with wires and cranes and all this sort of stuff. And you can see all this lumber, this timber is from Thailand, Thailand to Liverpool. Uh, and 
the dockers were resisting the new way of carrying things, which was in containers. So they, they wanted to keep everybody busy and occupied. And so here, here's a, a great example of it. And, Take this um, over there if you're not going to pay attention. Pardon? Go to the I've other got... part of the house. Oh, you're talking to somebody else? Okay. Um, so here's um, another scene. Uh, this is the era when they were starting to knock down these massive six, six seven-story warehouses, and in the background you can see there's one coming down. Um, I applied for a job as a demo demolition guy, and um, I didn't last the day. Because there's, these guys in the background are standing on these walls after a crane with an iron ball has gone round and smashed out as much as it can and then there's four guys up there then then you end up in a gang with a pickaxe and you you were 20 30 feet above the ground and you were you were you were knocking out big bricks and stones and stuff and it was um it didn't suit me <laughs> surprised yes <laughs> i was surprised so um uh, here we go. Now, this is uh, this is getting into the um, the area of the inner city of Liverpool, where there's a lot of poor people and people without jobs and mentally sometimes unstable. And here's a guy, and you can see what's in front of him is a little tin, a round tin. That's actually a tobacco tin. And what these guys did during the day. <clears throat> is they walk around the streets, assuming it was dry, and they'd pick up old cigarette butts, you know, the tips on them, and they'd come back to this, what we call the DOS house, and they'd take the, the, the contents out of the, what was remaining out of the cigarette, and put it into another tobacco tin, and then with cigarette papers, they'd, they'd roll themselves a fresh cigarette. And there's obviously some social interaction going on here. But the guy in the background, uh, I was told to be wary of, <laughs> uh, because the owner of this joint was um, a kind of a, a good, a do-gooder, and he had told me that he had this fantastic collection of slave items that he wanted to create a museum to slavery in Liverpool, and he was amazingly well-spoken and terrifically educated, and here he was, he was running this DOS house for the uh, indigent. Uh, and a few years later, this whole place burnt down with somebody smoking in bed. And uh, <laughs> the sheets caught fire. I don't, I don't know what the casualties were. But, but Bernard, yeah, yeah. this is a fabulous photo. <laughs> Thank it's you. Fabulous. I love it. I am. Beautiful light. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. And um, the thing about it is, is that it's just overhead fluorescence, and there's a window, you know, 30 feet to the left, but it's the overhead fluorescence, and that shiny green uh, paint on the walls that gave you that flared up highlight. And, um, you know, what I would do in those days, uh, I, I, I smoked, and therefore I carried cigarettes with me, and that was the, 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 the wampum of the homeless and the indigent, is to offer them a cigarette or offer to buy a cup of tea. And, um, but that, and that usually curried favor. So, you know, I'd get through a packet of 20 uh, on a visit to these places. And then I'd meet these guys sometimes in the streets weeks later, and they'd shuffle up and say, hey, have you got any of those uh, cigarettes left? <laughs> they want some ciggy. Um, I think so, it's the perfectly placed in that, in that frame. Well, especially that, that, that face. Yeah, you're right. And the hands, the language of the hands mm -hmm. and the body language of the man looking down, he's, he's grasping folded arms, whereas the other guys are more aggressive and pointing. He was talking about politics or something, as one does. Uh, and saying the Labour government works, the Tories don't, I think. So um, I'll move on to the next one. And this is one that um, the, I haven't got the exposure corrected here very well. Uh, 
Um, let me see if I can. Let's see. Here we go. Share. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You don't have you, you, you don't have to stop sharing. No, but I can't see what you're saying. So sometimes I'm reticent because the screen changes. So that's it's, it's like it. But here's um here's a guy with a black eye like, staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his racing paper. If he is looking on the left of his face, that's a black eye. His racing page out, you know, wondering what to spend his money on. And the guy on the right with his shoulder to us has this beautiful jacket. And I just found this, wow, this is entrancing. He's got he's got a designer jacket on. How amazing. And when I came up close, the guy with the black eye said, uh, I wouldn't stick around if I was you. <laughs> because <laughs> pointing to the guy on the left, he doesn't like you. <laughs> and he's gonna hit you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm off. <laughs> so I kind of left shortly afterwards. So, um, but you know, I was wearing an old dark coat, you know, military coat, and the beard and the long hair and the ciggies and all that. So I, I, I tried to fit in, and up to a certain point, it worked. But I didn't see myself having a career out of this. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw it as. Wow, I'm able to burrow into the netherworld of uh, of the of Liverpool's underworld. Actually, Bernard, you've you've lost the photo now. I don't know what you've been doing. I, I closed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but now now we're seeing all the. You need to you need to make that full screen, the photo, because we're seeing all the background stuff. Oh, the one you're looking at now. The one you're looking at now says wet paint. Yep. Yeah. Right. We can see we can see it. So yeah. just, just, just make it well. just make it large. Just enlarge it. Make it full screen. Hit the green dot. Okay, here we go. Um, move, move it over to the right, and you'll see your you know your your clothes and your green dot, your yellow dot, and your uh, red dot. I don't see them. The, up at the top left. It's left corner. Oh, top left. No, it's... Up at the. I'm looking at the top right. No, 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 on the on the window. No, no, on the picture. There I'm you go. Picture. That one. Oh, there you go. One. Now look at the top. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Gotcha. So this was just a, 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 a comic to me. Here's a guy with his butt against the window, and he's phoning in some bet to a racetrack, and I could hear him. And he's, he's, he had a long list and he was getting very comfortable. But the fact that it says wet paint inside and out, <laughs> this is a yeah, completely ignored. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, and if you roam around as, um, as a street photographer, uh, this is the sort of opportunity that you get. And um, so there's a lot of pictures I took that the exposure wasn't right uh, or something was going wrong i i forgot i, I well, forgot the developer in the tank i don't know what you're doing but you're you lost the photo again yeah because i've closed it okay okay and then i'm gonna this is a vertical of a man with cigarette smoke yeah so i just yeah, I like that to, i just happened to be walking by and look through the window and i thought damn that's a hell of an exposure i've got the milk bottles and the white top. I mean, I can I can fix it nowadays. And it, at the time, I I burnt it in, in the dark room. But uh, at the exhibition, uh, somebody came up to me and said, "That's my dad." And, and this happened <laughs> a few times. I mean, people I had, had no connection with were suddenly uh, stars of this exhibition of sixty photographs. So I'm going to close this one down and uh, move on to the next one. And this is another visual, bit of a visual pun. If I make it up, there you go. So there it is. Um, there's a big building company called Tyson, and they put up these big boards with the logo on it. And uh, I discovered this guy, 
digging with this pickaxe. And there's some spades and other tools around. And I just experimented with where was the best place for the tea to be. And I decided on this one. So a bit of a visual perversion thing going on. Uh, I, I, and you would probably do the same. <laughs> I'm guessing. It was a very dull day. I remember I couldn't get the shutter speed I wanted. So I looked up another one. And um, this is a, 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 a lumber yard, a timber yard that was on strike. And I actually had worked there in the previous summer. And there was it was the beginning of the little road to the lumber yard, and there's the ladies' toilets there. And so on top of it, the ladies being out of order, and then there was official signs saying road closed, and then there's handwritten signs. You know, I, I do believe from a snooty point of view that strikers should take a course in typography and how to create letter forms. The, the sans serif is preferred, but the <laughs> <attempted>. yeah. <laughs> Oh, scab labor. Uh, you'll notice they spell labor with a U. Yes, that's. And then these old lamps, these are lamps below with little, there were oil lamps with hooks on them. And you'd find them uh, all over the place. And suddenly they switched to the, um, the electronic flashing light, an orange light. And all these, um, all these little oil, oil lamps became collector's items. So you'd see them, see them in every junk store. And they were stolen, of course. Now, what is a, a scab? A scab is somebody who says... He's not union. He's a strike breaker. He's, he's okay. non-union. He's a strike breaker. And he's going to drive through delivering something, either in or out. And you know, there's a massive need for lumber and timber all over the place. People are always building. And these guys would volunteer here to drive the um the lorries out and you know sometimes there's serious problems and then you had a lot of stuff during maggie thatcher's reign uh were the coal miners they were they were blockading coal mines and things like that and they would have what they call flying pickets these were pickets who would go 100 200 miles to uh to, to try and block business outside um, uh, strike areas. So I'll close this one. And um, here we go now with another completely different scene. This is, these are Irish tinkers. And you can see the main guy has got these gold rings on his hand. And all the various children are staring at the camera. You couldn't get them away. It's impossible. <laughs> if you got rid of one, three more would appear. And you see they've got wheels uh, from vans and things. And there's two dogs. And it's, it's sleet. And so these people lived on the outskirts on these bomb sites that we call bommies. And they might have 10 to 20 uh, caravans or trailers. They're, they're the travelers, right? They're the Irish travelers. They're the Irish travelers. Yeah. Uh, we called them at the time tinkers. Um, and they would, uh, they did a lot of things. And in the early days, they would um, mend holes in buckets with, with zinc. You know, they had heaters and things. So they had some function at some point, but they became increasingly irrelevant in a sense. Uh, and they'd get these old abandoned vehicles and take them apart, take off the wheels, remove valuable things, and try and sell them. So but I got to know them quite well. Why did you I call them up... tink? Why did you call uh, them tinkers? Why did you tinkers? Call them... Yeah, because they tinker, tinker with things or what? What? Well, yeah, I mean they, they, they did small jobs, like, like they'd repair holes in buckets and things like that, or they'd sell clothes pegs. And I remember my mother. Uh, buying clothes pegs and um, they had they'd leave marks on walls and things to say where it was safe or unsafe they had their own language and uh, so we we'd get annual visits 
uh, from one or two of these people who were just in a van or something. There were there were twenty vans, and uh, they they'd come and um, you know they would. Uh, my my mother was born in Ireland, so you know she could uh, uh, talk to them. You might say, and um, but you know it all began to die out, and it, and what it, happened in Liverpool was um, that they decided that the tinkers had a better place in society and there was a movement to stop calling them derogatory names and call them traveling people and so if you look up traveling people sites in liverpool uh, you'll probably find uh, places where they can get water electricity and the place doesn't look like a raving shit house uh, wasn't the Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? Wasn't that a a, a book by? Was well, that was about spies? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, it was about you know, the the highest levels of British spying. Right. Uh, in Eastern Europe. The um a friend of mine named uh, Jamie Johnson uh, just published a book uh, called uh, Growing Up Traveling, uh, and uh, it's uh, she's spent a number of years uh, with the Irish uh, travelers. And this is a photo mostly about the children. It's a- uh, yes. that, that It was really... published by the German publisher. Yes, um, I could tell you. I'm not seeing it, yeah. Kernan so or something. Kernan, Kerner, Kerner or something like that is the public. Koisler. Tinker yes. Taylor, Soldier Spy, isn't that John Le Carre? That's what I said, yeah. Yes. And, the, and that was the book by John Le Carre. And by the way, you, sh if you get a chance, you should read or get the audio tape for John Le Carre's uh, autobiography about growing up with his father. His father was a trickster and always dodging creditors and debtors and things. And that's what gave him the balls to operate in East Germany. And it is a fascinating story about growing up with a dad who was, who was a real con artist. I, it, it's in Redondo Library. I, I do recommend it. It's gripping. I mean, uh, anyway, I, I won't go to East Germany right now. Um, but um, so anyway, you can see there's a lot of people, all the kids, different ages, and uh, they've got these bright sweaters on, which are probably homemade, I would say, I guess. Um, that'd be very typical. Um, and, you know, in general, they were friendly. And, you know, you hand that out the ciggies. And I, and I did portraits of them and I shot stuff in colour. And, you know, people, just like people everywhere, they clown around and they put a glass bowl on their head or a, or a, 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 you know, a table lamp uh, cover on their heads. This sort of nonsense. But um, I, I could have gone back there for ages and ages and ages. But... Um, there was always other things happening. Right, so is that um, a cooking pot? Are they cooking? In the that, that, that's an enamel cooking pot and the guy standing up in his right hand. Now, he could have been using that to uh, gather oil from an engine. Uh, he's not going to cook with that pot uh, where these fires are because the fires were toxic. They were like burning rubber and God knows what. Right. But there's another pot down by the wheel. You can see it. Yes. So, um, I didn't get into uh, traveling people's cuisine or <laughs> recipes for the day. <laughs> well, in this image, it looks like all the children are well fed and happy. Yeah, big smiles. Yeah. That's actually right. And and they would crowd up to the camera and put the fingers on the lens. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Is that one of their vans there on the left? Yep, that's a van. It looks like it's a two-tonner. And then there's something else uh, in the middle background behind behind the man who's looking. Uh, yeah, that's one of their uh, caravans, their uh, trailers. Yeah, that's it. The trailers. Um, Isn't the full thing Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy Rich Man Poor Man Beggar Man? Thief. Yeah, I think I think that's Beggar the second thief. book, isn't it? Yes. Uh, but I can't remember the details. Again, Google is my memory and my friend. I'd have to <laughs> look at that. 
What I like about that, I mean, the children are very attentive to you, but the adults are, you know, just going on about their business, and even the dogs are not paying attention to you. No, they've they've got fleas and they're biting themselves. <laughs> um, but the, the but the men are in charge. The, uh, everything's in cash and gold and rings and old cloth. You don't see any women there, just the children with the men. Uh, the, yeah, there's a couple of girls in the picture. But um, I don't think I've got a woman. I, I've got a couple with their new baby and the new baby looks like it weighs 20 pounds. It's, but but it's not in this grouping. Um, so I'm going to remove this baby. And um, let's see. Um, so here we're at a different social. At the races. Huh? At the races. Correct, at Aintree. Very famous race course. It's, they're still racing there. The Aintree Iron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right, by the scaffold. Yeah. And Roger McGough was my liberal arts tutor at the art school. Yeah. But this was, um, this was uh, called Rollers and Roller. Or rollers and ro rollers, <laughs> because these are all uh, all these people are all working class, right? And they're smack in front of the symbol of wealth, which is the Rolls Royce, and of course it made for a great collection. And in the background, you can see the the stands where all the wealthy people are, and. Um, so this is just by chance, you know, and, um, you know, you can't see this thing from a hundred yards away. You can only see it by suddenly turning a corner and go, oh, my God, this is a fantastic juxtaposition. And so uh, I didn't take more than a few shots, you know, because I think when you're working with one frame at a time, I think you train yourself to be very automatic in choosing uh, the best thing. And, you know, the position of the Rolls Royce is, is also about shafting them, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, and there's one face that's discernible on the left. But, but um, yeah, I, I, I kind of enjoyed that one. Um, let's see, we've got, oops, I'm trying to close it. Uh, Oops, I can't see the close. Oh, there we go. Close the top. And I'm now going to open up another one, which will show you another aspect of the day at the races. And this one has a lot of information in it that um, <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see. Um, uh, first of all, you've got a guy on the ground, and there's all these paper plates blowing in the wind, and he's he's just got drunk. He just drank too much. But in the background, you see all these tour buses, what we call charabanks. Tony, does that ring a bell? That yeah, yep, yeah, charabank. Charabank, yep. Coach. Yeah. Coaches, charabanks. And what you're looking at, are, these are day trippers from all over the north of England, where they could... Um, uh, you know, drink, uh, have lunch at a fish and chip shop on the way down, that sort of stuff. And then when the six races were over, they would all go back to dinner or complaining or throwing up. But what you'll notice, and there's, there's two guys walking by, right? And they're both holding beer and something else. But if you look at the guy on the left, just to the left of his head, there's a policeman. And he's slowly walking towards me. And it got to a point where he was saying, stop. You know, you're humiliating him. So there was, there was a concern. Oh, you mean you take, because you were taking a photo of the guy? The yeah. yeah. Ah. He came over and said, that's enough. It doesn't look like anyone's trying to help him. But uh, no. <laughs> They're just all just kind of by gawking at him. He's just collapsed. And I don't know if he was sick or 
had a heart attack. He might but not have been okay. He could have been perfectly fine. He could have been having a, an afternoon. He was just smooth. tired. <laughs> but a siesta. And no. the, the reason that I, I kind of like this one is the plate has lifted up and is at an angle against his back. There's a white plate. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're all so lightweight and they're polystyrene that the first gust of wind blew these things all over the place. And there must have been a nightmare to clear up. Uh, they probably waited the next day for all the paper plates and cups to end up against a, a, a chicken wire fence and then they could gather them. But um, yeah, and there's a lot of people watching. The group on the left are fascinated, but uh, there's no first aid. No. No. So, I'm sad. <laughs> well, it's life, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it is. Plenty of people fall down drunk at the you know, backs of pubs and things. And uh, but here's another one that has another comment on British society. And. Um, <laughs> This is uh, the guy on the left is savoring his his light ale. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> and uh, like a Mackerson to me. <laughs> yeah, because it's dark, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then the woman is uh, is wearing the leopard skin, which was popular at the time, and she's having a hell of a time. Um, and so these people have all, probably all arrived on a shower bank, you know, a coach. And in the background, you can see the betters, you know, the, the what do they call them, Tony? The, the people who take the bets? The bookies. Bookies, thank you. Yeah, you see all the bookies in the background. And, uh, but this lot are really having a great time. And uh, the, guy, the, the, guy in, the guy in the middle. Looks a lot like the guy in the pub that told warned you off. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's funny, but he's not. <laughs> yes. What if I'd just chosen five people and 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 made all these photographs, staged them? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, here is. Uh, we're getting near the end, folks. So don't don't leave just yet. So this is taken in the back alleyway behind the house I was born in and it was a delivery you called it a jigger or a back alley and here's some kids they've made a cart and they've got their pet doggy and uh, this is in Crosby so my house is behind me uh, on the right and we would climb over and down into the alleyway and the house the, the, the brick wall behind them there's a famous sociologist who grew up there who was a contemporary of my older brothers. And he has a, a, a really uh, interesting um, BBC show about words. Uh, if, you want, what, if you want to know any more, drop me a line, I'll tell you who it is. Um, so this was just a cute scene and I just saw it and realized, wow, it's beautiful. It's, you know, it's the innocence. Our, our childhood and this one hasn't been spotted very well you see there's a few white spots around the two kids on the left but um i'd like to see the size yeah. was quite I'll make that a bit bigger. so a year would this have been this would have been about 1969 70. wow i would have been 20 then <laughs> 1920. were you ever 20? <laughs> Sorry, Tony. <laughs> but you see, I mean, we love to make carts as well. And this is all part of a, a generation who had to look for wheels and axles, you know, yep. and other things that would make a cart look interesting. Like that old door in the background that they made it out of. Yes, you can see. Is that a platform for another one? Uh, and yeah. I, and I can remember all this stuff. And so that's very much a, a childhood thing for me, even though I wasn't with them. They were doing exactly what I've done, you know, eight years before. I want to know what the young scamp on the left side's doing with his ham going down the young lady's skirt. Uh, he's picking a pocket, I presume. Because Liverpool's known for its thieves. 
Yeah. <laughs> As Tony would probably attest. <laughs> so I'll move on to the next one. We just got a few left here. Alright, uh, that's the card. And this one is a chimney sweep. Uh, um, Remember the chimney sweeps, yeah. Chimney sweep. The chimney sweeps were used. There was a function for them. They cleared out you know, the chimneys. They were tall coal burning, and they also appeared at weddings. So I left uh, left Leicester School of Photo now Leicester Polytechnic, and I went out to a job in Healdsburg to work in a, a, a vineyard, and uh, it was good. I had a job for six months, and they paid well, and I learned. Uh, uh, I was doing my own thing, and one day I was introduced to a guy who said that uh, his wife had seen that I was developing film and hanging it in the ranch kitchen where I was staying. I said, "That's right." He said, um, "What what are you using? You know, what what's the formula?" And I told him. He said, "Well, I'm a student of Ansel Adams, and I can suggest to you a much better fine." brain developer and he basically introduced me to Edwell, I think it was called, and diluting it and taking longer to develop the film. And so uh, as a result of that, I came back with this much more interest in what did the image details look like? What was the technology I was doing? And I left, um, I left California having um, I stayed in Palos Verdes at uh, someone's house and they had a dark room and I made this fabulous portfolio of Indians and workers and rainbows over the, the vineyard. Mm. And this beautiful stuff. And somebody else put me in yeah. touch with um, National Geographic and they made an appointment for me in January. I extended my visa, went to National Geographic in Washington, D.C. And uh, it was very nice. There was, a, there was a massive room full of light boxes and slides and things, uh, which I didn't pick up on. And I showed him my black and white portfolio. And I said, in, you know, inspired by Ansel Adams, blah, blah, blah. And he said very nicely, well, Bernard, I don't know if you've seen National Geographic, but since 1954, we haven't used black and white. <laughs> Oops. It was just black and white. <laughs> but he said, I'd love how I'd love to see how you use Kodachrome. So if you can bring me a portfolio of Kodachrome. I'll be happy to see you again. But I never went back because things happened in England. Um, and I and I used my USA portfolio to get a job at the BBC. Uh, and then I moved on to a magazine. That, so I'll close this one. Before we um, go on, um, yes, you see chimney sweeps, sweeps at weddings. What were they doing there? Um, they were a source of good luck because they were filthy. Uh, and this guy in particular that I just had up, um, he was a fixture around Waterloo, which is part of Crosby, and um, uh. He didn't go to weddings, but there was another one that I was photographing who did, and he was much more outgoing. This guy was very introvert, and um, he lived in a poor part of um, Little Sweden. The, the, these were names of uh, streets that were all to do with Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. And then we had another area uh, in Waterloo named after the Battle of Waterloo, and there was all sorts of references to the you know, the, the generals and Blucher and the, the, not Napoleon, but Wellington. So, and um, so all the streets had something to do with British history. I was born on Prince's Avenue near Coronation Park next to York Avenue. I mean, we were steeped in the empire when these houses were built in about 1900. So you can imagine how we're being pretty <laughs> brainwashed. But what was interesting was, there was the, and I heard this from a few people, when this guy died, um, they were about to knock down the streets and they started to take off all the slates, the valuable things, out of the houses. And then they'd, um, now the house was open to rain and people broke the windows and climbed inside. 
and smash things and they'd throw things around and they're just young vandals in training but some of the kids uh dug behind one of the fireplaces and they found all these gold yellow coins and they had no idea what they were they just thought they were toy tokens and they started throwing them around the street and they were golden guineas but this guy <coughs> accumulated the last 50 years and so it was a, a you know some some grandmother said here what are you doing throwing those around <laughs> those are valuable give them to me <laughs> or whatever <laughs> Yeah. So, um, is that a legend or is well no it's reportedly true and that's why they're considered lucky so why should uh, you, should no uh, lucky? Uh, guineas are considered lucky because if you had one it's worth one pound and one shilling but you said <laughs> chimney sweeps were considered lucky yes and i don't know why they were lucky at weddings i think it's the contrast between the beautiful white uh dress and the materials and this grubby, grubby uh, covered in muck guy. <laughs> and with, so they, they'd they actually have them at a lot of different weddings? That was a tradition? Uh, I don't know if it's died out. Um, but um, I'm sure there's something to do with race or something to do with it. Uh, I could be wrong, but, um, uh, but, but I followed this guy around for a couple of days and I went inside all the houses and he was getting cups of tea and scones and and then he'd go to a, a public site and throw away all the soot in a huge plume that drifted across into gardens and things so it wasn't uh, google says the tradition of chimney sweeps kissing the bride and shaking the groom's hand for good luck started about 200 years ago after a london chimney sweep saved the life of king george the third to this no. day a chimney sweep is considered a sign of good luck wealth and happiness thank you tony that's amazing yeah it's amazing what you find on google <laughs> <laughs> Do. uh well, here's, um... bathed or unbathed <laughs> i don't think they they bathed depends where they lived but um here's a kid here's a picture of a kid with a snowball challenging me and if you look down the street you'll see there's a trash pickup and there's a slate covered house and you know the insulation was terrible because the heat has melted the snow inside the attic yeah it's now about to fall off the roof and luckily hit someone down below <laughs> that was the intention okay i'm going to move on to the next one uh, and the next one, this is funny. Um, <laughs> uh, the exposure is not great, but this was the era of the green stamps. And you can see there's travel yeah. stamps and things like that. What's, uh, it's, it's outside of what we call a co-op, which Tony would recognize. Yeah, co-op. The kids, the kids are all unattended, except for one kid looking after another kid. And this is be, it'll be unheard of these days, but because the shop was so tight, they couldn't push the babies and the perambulators inside the shop. So they left them outside. <laughs> <laughs> and this yeah. is a twenty. This is a twenty-eight millimeter lens. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was just one shot. I think it, I borrowed the lens from the photo department. And spent, and spent the weekends tripping out on it, uh, as as indeed one would. Um, so red sockeye salmon, fifteen p. <laughs> Good lord! Can you translate that into modern money? Fifteen p. It was two hundred and forty pennies to the pound then, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but when they brought the p in, they they can. Oh yes, that's right. Decimal. Yeah, so fifteen p. <laughs> 15p would have been uh, what? Uh, two and well, six, I guess. There was probably four dollars to the pound. Yeah. At that time. Well, it's a co op and, you know, things were cheap. Yep. And they had all these stamps. So when you filled up a, a page of stamps, then you got um, 
some lucky charm or something. And then um, let's see, you got that. And then we've done 20. Do you want to see two more? Sure. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. That's both finished. This was uh, a scene near the Liverpool Cathedral, the Protestant one, which had taken over 100 years to build it. And there was some uh, houses built about in the 1830s nearby. And, you, and what I was looking at was the connection of the shapes of the TV antenna and the decorated chimney pots and then the decorated <laughs> covering around the, the, the tower of the cathedral. And it was on the, one of those rare occasions of snow in Liverpool that everyone freaked out because it was so quiet. And then finally, here's the first wedding I did. And um, <laughs> it's in a suburban house. And there's all sorts of crap on the floor. And I didn't know what, it was, it was confetti. Confetti, yeah. And, oh. confetti, and there was these four people all suffering from social insularity. There was a tension <laughs> because it was a... <laughs> cake knife and then on the right there's a wide lens uh, was this gorgeous cake with all these subtle tones and there was uh, meats and spoons and things but in the street outside you can see a ninny yep. and another thing but tucked away in the left hand corner above the left hand lady Beethoven Beethoven <laughs> they're showing the cultured yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This this, uh, this photo was also in uh, Carafano's show, wasn't it? In, in yes, show. it was. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Ray Ray was a good sport, and um, so that's it. Very good. Very good, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Those are nice. Right. Yeah. Anyone got any questions before we sign off? Uh, what kind of camera did you use? A uh, thirty-five mm uh, Or did you yeah, use the, the one, the one, the second one of the tugboat, right? With the, the man's leaning in the dark. That was taken with a half-frame Canon Demi. Mm. It was in with Kodachrome. So when it was enlarged, uh, you know, I had an exhibition at the Liverpool Museums. Show was blown up to about. Uh, four and a half feet by three feet. Because it was a color slide, they could get three times the imagery to have a, a to have a lot of uh, pixels. So there were half frames. And Jim, do you remember coming over and you were you were helping with a half frame picture of Santa Claus in Liverpool? Do you ever remember that? A few years ago. Mm -hmm. You were showing me. You were showing me how you did. Um, Are you talking uh, to me? Layers. Yeah, I'm talking to, you, to Jim McKenna. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. Good. Good. <laughs> I well, need some frame. You could get seventy-two pictures on one film, couldn't you? That was the whole point of it. But um, uh, I didn't know that the color. I mean, I've got pictures of trips to Middle East and all sorts of stuff on half frame. And then I took a roll of infrared to North Africa, not knowing how it was going to turn out. And things like a red Coca-Cola sign turned out to be bright yellow. Oh. <laughs> you get these complete chances. So I was very much into experimenting. Uh, and that was um, what I like to do, because I was never quite happy with myself. Uh, and I'm getting used to myself now, but it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> you must have to get used to you. <laughs> you should mute yourself. <laughs> um, there was there was a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff that I wish I'd got a better technical grasp of, you know, and developing things because I had a hundred sheets, and when I came to Put them up in around about 2010. They've had footprints of where they landed on the darkroom floor. You know these black and white negatives. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I'm about to send off some Jim to uh, that German publisher. 
you put me oh, in touch oh, with yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Do they or something? It's uh, Kerr, I think, is the name of the publisher. Um, so the um, well, when you when you quit sharing, I'll show you something. Um, okay. I'll look here. But if anybody knows any publishers you think might be uh, interested in this series of photographs, do let me know. Okay. Hey. Um, just because it's hard to um, convince people, and um, you know, I, I I've, I've taken lots of other photographs. This is only twenty-two you saw. So, um, okay. Uh, Got the name here. Stop sharing. Uh, have I stopped? No, no. You've got to go up to the top and or up to the middle, and it should say uh, stop sharing. Stop sharing. There we go. There you okay. go. There you go. Um, I hate sharing. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is that uh, Jamie Johnson book. Yes. And it says the uh, growing up traveling. Travel yeah. has two L's in it. Correct, the British spelling. Right. And then um, here's one of the, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, the whoops. caravan. Here's, here's one of the caravans. Oh, yeah. That's it. All the Romanies that had those kind of caravans. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to tell. I could never tell which one is which, if they're the Romany or the uh, traveling. Well, well it's it's kind of caravans, technically Romany. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been in a uh, Irish town. Uh, the same day that the tinkers came in, as we call them, Ben. And uh, I did take some pictures, but it was a bit too close for comfort because the men all, once they got the money from the post office, the Social Security, they hit the pubs with a vengeance. And the women were sent out with babies. And, you know, you, you, you're talking by a lamppost in the street and suddenly, Mr. Could you give me a shilling? the wee child and here was and she was holding in a, a one piece uh, tartan a baby whose face was streaked with dirt and she said he's hungry and you know your heart melted but that's what they were supposed to do <laughs> yeah they were just playing on your strings you know uh but um yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a business in those days to appeal to foreigners and tourists. So, yeah, things have changed, maybe. I don't know. Thanks, Bernard. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for the invitation to show. Uh, I really appreciate you guys as a fantastic audience. Well, found it fascinating. <laughs> and you know what I think is interesting about this street photography? A lot of they are competition photos. They say you know narrow it in or focus on one thing that wider angle you're getting a lot of detail and really tells a bigger a wider story i think it's i think that's important yeah not to cut out you don't have story easy. without context most um most street photographers use uh, uh well maybe not most but they use 35 millimeter or 28 number just just for that reason you want to get more into the into the frame oh, right. yeah. it's a different style of photography than you can yeah. it. You use a Leica. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got uh, an M4. Um, the thing never had a light meter in it, so you're always guessing the weather. Yeah. And in Western Northern Europe, good luck. <laughs> needed an M6. Uh, yeah, that with the light meter. Yeah, that's right. That's what I needed. But um, that was before my time. <laughs> so think that you could focus on farm people, you know, or people who work uh, on the beach or something, you know, and I, I if, if anybody wanted to focus on something, people's lives, um, it would, it would start to make sense, you know, at first, nothing's obvious. And then by the time you've hung around a bit, and not gone home after the, after the final show, uh, there's always something like there used to be on Friday nights in the pubs um, outside of um, where I was in the countryside, Magol and Lydia, places like that. You'd get um, 
people selling seafood that they'd caught that day on the local sands. And it was cooked and it was tasty and it went well with the bill. Then I decided to go out one day and um, went out to get some photo photos and a horrible accident took place where there was some, um, they were using Chinese labor who brought in illegally into Britain. And these guys were being sent out into the bay above Liverpool, Morecambe Bay. And they didn't know what the hell they were doing. They just told to go out with some nets and buckets and spades. But no one told them about the incoming tide. <coughs> and they were completely cut off and those 15 were drowned. Oh. The whole thing got a bit ugly after that. <laughs> tragic. Yeah, it was a tragic. So, um, what's next? Hey, how about uh, Yosemite? Uh, sure. Who, who wants that? Who uh, wants to go I'll first? Go. Yeah, I'll go first. Do I have uh, stuff from you? No, I, I'm going to share. Okay, fine, great. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's um, do it. Do I want to optimize for images, I yes. suppose? Yes. Unless there's audio, optimize for images. Okay. Start broad. Oh. oh, we were in the files. Okay, are you seeing that? It's very cute. <laughs> oh, great. Yes, you are seeing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did you do that with your finger or was that Ed doing it with his member? Uh, with my finger. I was by myself. <laughs> okay. No yellow snow there. <laughs> this is our, uh, our camper. And as you can see with the, this was in the northern end of the valley, or I should say the eastern end of the valley where, where the snow was a, a little bit more accumulated. <laughs> and they just uh, plow out your spot and let the rest of the snow sit there. The upper river campgrounds? Yeah, upper, upper pines. Upper, upper pines. pines, yeah, excuse me, upper pines, yeah. Elevation there, Penny. Okay, this is uh, Cheryl. Penny? Cheryl. Penny? Cheryl. What? Can there. Do you want to say that again? What is the elevation? Oh, I don't know. About four thousand feet. About thirty-five hundred feet. Okay, just just curious. They don't get that much snow in the valley. I mean, a lot of times when it snows in Yosemite, the valley doesn't get that much. So this is um, um, a trail up to the upper Yosemite Falls that we took on our, our first day there, um, uh, up, up, it was pretty, a lot of switchbacks, I should say. Um, switchbacks? So it's a real steep trail. Yeah. And we went up a mile up the trail. This is um, Columbia Point. So a kind of a different view, getting up above the valley floor that I, I like quite a bit. That's nice. And that's the Awani down below, um, uh, below Half Dome there. That's the Awani. Now it is. It is the Awani again. Yeah, and again. Yeah. Uh -huh. And here we are thinking that we're going to get Horse Terrell Falls. <laughs> but by the time sun sunset hit, um, the clouds came in too much and we didn't get uh, Horse Terrell Falls. But the light 
beam up there is right where you want it to be. It just didn't stay along. Why is the lack of the crowds you normally see? That was at 11 in the morning. Oh. No. <laughs> and, no, this, no, this wouldn't have been that way at 11. <laughs> this was um, Friday evening and um it was a whole different matter on the next day saturday it was uh, that pretty much one or two in the afternoon we couldn't find a place to park even um except in our campground there there were so many people there even on saturday there are uh, restrictions so right yeah, can you unmute just... cheryl Oh my God. I think Cheryl might have something to say. Yeah. Well, she's not saying anything. It's okay. great. We'll, we'll move along. Uh, this was Saturday morning up at uh, Tunnel View, overlooking um, the entrance to the valley uh, with snow flurries. But um, the the forecast was for the storm to clear out. So we got up there around 630 before sunrise and the place was a zoo. It was very difficult to find a place to park alongside the road and then walk up to the viewpoint. It was pretty crazy because of um, all the people that were there on Saturday um, and also the concept of getting the clearing storm uh, photograph that Ansel made famous, uh, famous Ansel Adams. Um, and this was um, was one that I got. Nice. And um, we the the snowfall from the night before was only like one inch of snow. Um, and so we rushed back down to the valley to to get some shots before the snow melted. Um, this is from the um, the uh, valley view. Um, they're coming out like you would from El Portal. And that's my shot of the reflection. Nice. I like that one. Nice. And um, this is from uh, a little ways up from Cathedral Beach there um, of the three brothers uh, is what this um, these uh, peaks are called. Oh. I believe that's all I have. I'm still in here. Uh -huh. um, I think Ed wants to go ahead and share next since we're using the same uh, iPod. And uh, you, you went up to Nevada Falls, is that, is that the first one? Uh, one of your shots was walking up to Nevada Falls, is that what you said? The, we, up to the Upper Falls. Upper Falls. Yeah, I had a, maybe I told you this, but I have, a, have had a friend named Drew uh, Speedy, who he and his uh, son fell off of uh, that uh, mist trail. It fell oh, off? No. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. I don't recommend that. Yeah, the mist trails closed during the winter because of yeah. the ice buildup. Yeah. You know. Are you all seeing a monochrome picture of a tree? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what that okay, is. Okay, then I got ready to go. Uh, this was in Yosemite. I think I've got four from Yosemite and four from uh, Death Valley. Um, apparently, my main focus at Yosemite was staying warm. I really didn't get too many great shots. Um, and I think also Death Valley, the harder uh more harsh images are, are i tend to see more sometimes with those i don't know but uh the valley for me uh the grand landscapes you know we've all seen them a thousand times which doesn't mean we still can't make nice pictures of them but i'm generally drawn to uh smaller scenes and i saw this opportunity here uh with the tree and photographed it and uh, you know, you I think it turned out okay 
Another one. Uh, this was actually near the start of our hike up to uh, Upper, Falls. Upper Falls. Yeah, I didn't make it. I've been having trouble with my knee, and I've got a strap that goes around there now that seems to be helping some. I got maybe, I got pretty close to where Penny made her photograph there, but I, I didn't get I was really glad I turned around because the time I got back, it was pretty uncomfortable. But I like the um, uh, warm and cool tones here and the simplicity of it. Is that a pussy wolf? Uh, I don't even want to think about that. I don't know what it is. I think it's no. I think it's an oak, some kind of oak. It's got as new buds. It looks like it's getting ready. Yeah. To yeah I was I just see. looking at the little buds on the um, on on the um, no. cell. It might be I. You know, for the botany stuff, I don't really yeah. know if it looks good. I photograph it. It's kind like of the same look. way with, with the women. If they look good, I might photograph them. Anything look anything I might want to see again, I'll photograph it. This is from Valley View, uh, Bridal Veil Falls uh, on the, the left third there. Uh, again, the clearing storm the same morning that Penny was talking about. The Valley Pull Off, Valley View Pull Off is very nice. Uh, we parked just up the road, maybe 100 yards, uh, so that uh, Larry and Cheryl would be able to get a space in the parking lot there. There's not room for a lot of cars, cars. Um, so it did look like there would have been room for both of us to park there. With the camper, we're real parking slot pigs because it's so big um i've gotten several shots from this location that i like this is the first one really of uh the, what i call the grand view that uh, i found appealing from the times i've been there it's really nice Ed. and that is horse Hill falls yes we and i'm not sure where the heck we were we we weren't at the main area where most people make their photographs and i continue working my way westward uh, down river and I scrambled through all kinds of stuff and I kept going and kept going turned out I went a lot further than I thought I'd gone and my knee was complaining about it on the way back but I did find a little bit better view um, the view where I had stopped initially I wasn't really getting all of the falls it was obscured by uh, the rock in front there and I was getting a piece of it at the top and a little bit at the bottom but that was about it so this worked out okay um, but I think next up is Death Valley. After Yosemite Valley, we drove down to Death Valley. Uh, and actually, this these are going to be in reverse order from uh, the way I put it. This is actually on our way out of the valley, the road toward uh, Lone Pine. Oh, but as we were coming on this road, I saw this tree, and it was all lighted up from behind and all bare, and it looked like it was it had a bunch of ice on it. It didn't, but it had kind of that look to it. And I thought, this would be nice uh, maybe almost looks one. like a infrared yes yeah it does it looks a lot like an infrared what i was not. thinking yeah uh, i photographed it in uh you know with the canon in color mode and then i converted it into uh, black and white and uh but I, this is i did several um i'm just going to show this one but i got two or three of them that i uh, <clears throat> pretty pleased with this cool tree here we camped at texas springs which is above the sunset campground and uh, you can't make reservations there. You have to get there before the last guy does. And we would ever camp there two nights. It's a dollar more than sunset, but there's no generators and uh, it's just, it's nicer. Sunset works out okay in the camper because you know we're pretty much home away from home in that thing, but uh, sunset, uh, but uh, Texas Springs is nice. I photographed this in the afternoon when we got there. There's just this phone booth. There's no phone in it. <laughs> uh, and I made a few exposures. I thought, well, this is cool. It's just kind of out there and I uh, liked it. And then Penny had the idea of putting a light in there. And I said, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. So we had a couple lights. We had a lantern thing. And then we had a, um, it was like an LED strip light. And it has a magnet on it. And it fit up and stuck itself right behind where, that, where it says phone. And it looks like natural light from the phone booth. Yeah. And so we had that up there. We had tripods and we were to make a photograph. And some guy comes wandering over and he just looks as curious as you can imagine. And he's saying, I've never seen a light on there before. And we like, man, you know, I've never seen a light in the phone booth. What's the big fascination? Well, it turns out he's the camp host and he's been there for weeks. And he was camped right next to the phone booth and he never had a light on it. <laughs> Suddenly tonight it's got a light, so he had to check that out. 
<laughs> for the photograph, uh, to the left of the phone booth, from our perspective, uh, there were some lights from Furnace Creek, and I uh, uh, cloned those out. I think there was a little something on the right somewhere that I got rid of, but I liked the loneliness of it and uh, just, just the isolation. I thought, I thought it was cool. I really liked it. Good idea, Penny. Very yeah, it was a great idea. It was a <laughs> yeah. It was cool. Yeah, my photo didn't turn out as well as it. So well, I I did some processing here to get what I wanted, and Penny did some light painting, and I I didn't want that. Uh, and maybe hers will have another character that's also nice, but I wanted to just I just wanted the phone booth to provide the light on the surrounding right, to make it look like you know a natural kind of thing. It's like why is AT and T paying to light up the. <laughs> It's you know, it's like, you know, it's... <laughs> well, at this campground, there were no other lights. Uh, the bathroom, you had to go in with a flashlight, etc. So it was a little bizarre to have this phone yeah. booth yeah. suddenly have a light on. <laughs> it's, it's the last light at Texas Springs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. Or is it ET? We did <laughs> all of West Side Road this trip. We'd never done all of it before. We'd come down to the tanks from the northern end of the road. Uh, this time we went all the way down to Ashford Mill, and then uh, just north of Ashford Mill is the start is the southern end of of uh, West Side. So we did that. Penny likes to call it Shake and Bake Highway. It's all dirt. It's a lot of uh, washboard stuff, and uh, but it was an interesting little adventure. And we got new tires on the bag. The Firestones were crap, uh, but these uh, seem to be holding up real well. And, uh, you know, again, like I say, I, I, I like kind of the harder stuff a lot of times, and uh, I managed to get this guy, which I think is okay. This is near the Mesquite Sand Dunes, but it's not the Mesquite Sand Dunes. It's called Little Dunes, I think, and it's just north of the airport, maybe north uh, northwest or northeast of the airport a little bit. And we'd started out... And of course, there's all this uh, flaky mud stuff there, and there was a, there, were, there were a couple boots there, and a book. Uh, Penny, I think, got some nice shots of the book. I took a few of the book, but uh, wasn't too enchanted with my results. But this too bad one, there wasn't a foot in that boot. Well, it probably just <laughs> as well because it might have been really stinky. It had been there for a long time. <laughs> uh, initially, this was photographed on our way back from the dunes. There's, uh, and, and to our left is the little dunes. Uh, as we look at the photograph, um, but I had photographed the boot and I had no uh, sky or hills in the background. It was just the boot and the ground. And I realized, you know, this is going to be better if it's got some context out there. It'll, it'll, you know, the boot is isolated in the other photos, but it doesn't show what the isolation is. And this, this shows it more. And I, I'm glad that I photographed it. It was fabulous. Yeah, on the way back. And, and uh, yeah, I like that guy. I think that's all I've got to show. I think I just had those eight. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, so with that, uh, questions or comments, and then we'll move on. I'd like to see Larry and Cheryl's pictures, too. I think they go. What? Did we wear them out? Very, very nice, very creative. They were trying to get Greg to unmute them. Unmute who? I've, I've unmuted him 12 times. All right. Because she's kept sending messages out <laughs> that you had unmuted. And in the end, she said, we're about to lose power in one to two minutes. Sorry. So I said, see you soon then. <laughs> Cheryl, are you there? No, I think they've gone. They're muted still. This is, this is her shot. This is Stephanie Barrel. Well, well, let me stop sharing and see if I can go back and get them back. But no, I keep I trying to get them unmuted. You're muted. sharing. You need to unmute her. I, I have. I've unmuted her 12 times. <laughs> Do the 13th time. Okay. Yay. Here you go. Okay, let me go back to share your images. Yo, baby. Uh, sorry, I we we lost power. We we've been on so long, um, and I had to go find a cord to charge, and then I had to come back in and yada yada. Uh, Show us your pictures. Yeah, so this is the first day. Um, Penny uh, uh, and I uh, and and um, 
Ed and Larry and I take the spot that was um, sort of to the east, and um, there's not very much flow, and it was sort of cloudy, but you can see a little bit of the firefalls there. That was our first night Thursday. And the second night was much too cloudy. We got a more head-on view, thinking we would see more of the falls. Um, and you can see right at the top where there's a little bit of glow, but um, it was just too cloudy to get anything. Oh, well. And yeah. then, yeah. uh, incidentally, we, we tried to go out on Saturday night or we thought about it, but I think 10,000 people came to the park and you, they made all kinds of restrictions. It was ridiculous. So um, the fortunate thing was that Friday night it snowed and Saturday we had this beautiful wispy clouds and snow. And so these are some pictures from that. Nice, Cheryl. Yeah, this is yeah. great. Guys. Very nice image. Beautiful. <clears throat> That's nice. That's Ed. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough. That's what's left of him. What a guest. <clears throat> mm. That was Mirror Lake. Should have saved that for reflections. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, look at oh, wow. well, <laughs> Everybody tried to get to view. Yosemite. <laughs> oh. I've never been there when it was that bad. Yeah, it was, it was pretty crowded. <laughs> yeah, it's it was seven in the morning. <laughs> but honestly, I I just don't think I would even go try to get the firefalls again unless it was during the week. The weekend that was ridiculous. This was actually taken from the uh, front windshield of the car through the front windshield. Pretty good. <laughs> this highway forty one heading into the valley. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Love it. That's that's it. That's us. I have no idea who this is. <laughs> Barry doesn't look like he's really good. That's it. Warm clothes on. Like it must have been. What were the temperatures there? <clears throat> Anything you want oh. to say, Lair? That's something to share. If I can. Uh take over the the thing well you you could share it well i'm not muted again right now hello we can hear you good we can hear you you can share it the well browser does not support sharing to share kind of switch to desktop app use a version of chrome can you can you hear us yes yeah. Muted. <laughs> yeah, she is well. muted again. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Hello. We can we Hi. can hear you and you can share it well. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes. I hear you. I hear you. You can't hear us. No, we can hear you fine. Hello. <laughs> we Hello. Well, well, there's a couple of problems. She has two connections at the moment, and I think that uh, WebEx is confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's probably got the second connection because she came back in after they lost power. Yeah, she's got two connections, right. and one of them is, is open, the other one has no video, no mic. We can hear her. We can hear her. We can see her. Can't you eject the one where she's got no mic and no video? Yeah, yeah. can't you just kill it, Greg? Yeah, I can probably do that. Hold on. Expel. Yes, they're gone. Okay. Cheryl. 
Hello, Cheryl. <laughs> She's left the meeting. No, no, she's over there. She's still there. I can see her. I hear her typing away. Yeah, we can hear. Let, they're not she's talking. unable to share from this computer. Did you see that? Yeah. The chat? The so maybe next week we don't have we sound again, so we will leave the ITU. What? We can hear you, we, Cheryl. We can hear you and see you. She's gone, I think, now. We could send a chat response. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Okay. Okay. They're leaving. They're yeah, it says Larry is unable to share from this computer, so maybe next meeting. We don't have sound again, so we're like beyond you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Okay, so was, other than was I have the last, as far as I know, I have the last share to do. Does anybody else have link, anything to share that I don't know about? Yeah, I'm going to share something. Okay, share away. No, no, go ahead, Greg. Okay. Um, okay. For video, is there anybody out there? <laughs> okay, I, I don't know why it's showing them. It's not supposed to be showing them. Okay, let me yeah. try that again. Share. I have no idea. They really, uh, they've got my share won't come up anymore. <laughs> Huh. Well, it's showing a video screen. Well, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing Cheryl and Larry. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't Too see bad. that. We, we see a video see, screen. We see a, a screen. Really? Okay. Well, that's that's kind of weird because I'm only seeing Cheryl and Larry, and I can't push the button to make this thing play. Wow. Well, that's bizarre. Uh -huh. it is. Uh, let me try again. Nope. Oh, okay. Let me try this. Nope. Still won't. Well, we, could, we could see something. Just yeah, blue. Could, <laughs> let me let me put this away. In 2017, I went with the camera club to do Horse Falls. And the first night we were there, it was pretty much a bust. We were on the northern side of the valley at the base of El Capitan. We didn't really see much. We got a little bit of pink at the end of the day. The next day we went off and we all did our thing exploring all over Yosemite Valley. Went up down the falls, Myrtle Falls, you know, Nevada Falls, whatever. And then we all went down to the south side of the valley to look at uh, to look at uh, Horsetail Falls with about 2,000 other people. <laughs> we were literally, our tripod legs were crossing with each other. <laughs> we were that tight. Yeah, that was there too. <laughs> it, it was, we got some fabulous shots. And if I can get this damn thing to, to show, over 45 minutes, I took 212 different images. Wow. The lighting kept changing. And it was really interesting that the, uh, the lighting started across the whole face of El Capitan. The whole thing was lit up bright silver. And then it slowly started to recede from the left side over until it focused into the canyon of Horsetail Falls. And then it lit up at the bottom of the falls. The glow started at the bottom and started to rise up the falls. It was a very slow procedure, and I'm literally taking pictures constantly. I took 212 images in about 12. In, uh... Well, Greg, if you start the video before you share. Well, I've tried, but it doesn't want to start. I keep coming up with Larry and... But they're not even here. <laughs> I know, but they keep coming up with them. Before they left. 
<laughs> and what I'm seeing when I bring it up is I'm seeing my image overlaying their images. <laughs> if it's you try to it, it, we might see it because we're seeing something. A screen, just seeing a screenshot. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, uh, okay. Let me do this. All right. Um, hold on. I think I might be able to fix this. Jim will fix it. Oh, no, sorry. Greg will fix it. <laughs> Probably only Bernard knows Jim will fix it. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Savile, right? Yes. Maybe. Who was unfortunately uh, oh. disgraced. I'm, I'm you there you go. Yes. Are you seeing it full screen? No. No, no. But that's fine. Yeah. Yes. was uh, is something they stopped years ago that came off of uh, Glacier Point. They yeah. literally built a fire every night during the summer right. and dumped the coals over the top. I've seen that. I've yeah. seen photos of it. Yes, it was I've seen it. Seen it. I was there. I got to see it in person. When I was Sometime in the 70s, they ceased doing it because it was not a natural phenomenon. However, Horsetail Falls, <laughs> and you never know. Some years you get good weather and you get water. Other years there's no water. There's the clouds are covered. You can't photograph it. You got like a two week window to capture that. Do you know who the first photographer was that um, printed a photo of that? That no, I didn't. That was Gaten Rowell. 
Good and roll. Yeah. And roll photographed that. And uh, at first, you know, it took a while for everybody to see it. So if you went there not too long after that photograph, it wasn't that bad there. There wasn't that many people. And then with our social media, it just got more and more popular and crowded. I was dumbfounded how many people had flown into Las Vegas or or uh, and driven to Yosemite Valley that day to take those pictures. Right. Or came from San Francisco six hours away. Wow. To take those they pictures. Come from other and countries. then they were returning home that day. So. There are people who come from all over the world for the opportunity to see that. They spend all kinds of money and then it doesn't happen that year. So yep, it doesn't. there's no guarantees. And we ran into an Asian man that same year, I think at 2017. And um, no, it must have been, it was a different year because the year that, because in 2017, we actually did see the falls, but on the year yeah. that we saw this man, he was, he didn't know where to look. He was looking for a waterfall that was going to light up and he was looking at bridal veil thinking that was it and we said no, no, no. <laughs> no right you can't see much water because you know it was a drought here and and there's not enough water it's not going to happen and the look on his face the distress because he, and he didn't want to accept he goes no no and he showed his pictures this where is it and we said well it's there but i don't think it's going to happen today and yeah, I if there's so not enough because... snow, and there's yeah. not, and, and the snow's not melting, and no. the sky is not uh, at least partially clear, you don't get horsetail falls. It's, and you have to have it happen in the sky over in the valley. Well, that helps. You don't have to have it, but it seems like if there's a lot of smog in the valley, the sun coming through there makes it more colorful. So yeah, that would be true, yes. It's a, yeah, more orange. Some years yeah. it's red, some years it's yellow, orange. Um, well, well, this year um, <laughs> you couldn't even be on the south side uh, road. That was all closed off to any stopping traffic. All really? the pullouts, all the pullouts had um, no parking, and um, we. We asked one of the rangers and they said um, the parking violations start at 2 p.m. Oh. Um, so so that we we were told we could ignore um, the signs that said no parking because we wanted to stop at a few spots on that <clears throat> the South Drive um, up up to the swinging bridge and the swinging bridge and and further where it was OK to park anywhere there. Um, because you had no view but you don't of the, get a view of the falls from there of course not yeah <laughs> so. <laughs> and um, so we got uh, whoops I, I was afraid of that we got this tag it's a parking violation <laughs> we collected uh, two of them <laughs> <laughs> but all they were were warnings uh, that that we were in violation. But we were not in violation. Yeah. That's the thing that pissed me off was, <laughs> you know, okay, what are you warning me about? I'm not in violation. I have a picture of the parking sign. It was one of these electronic things and it tells you all, gives you all this information. And I got a picture of our camper parked by this sign that I made at 1106 in the morning. And the sign says the parking, uh, the no parking starts at noon from noon to seven. Oh, it okay. And I photographed this before we didn't have any of these citation things yet. I photographed it in case somebody <laughs> wanted to make a big fuss and say, we're going to give you a ticket for this. And I was going to say, no, you're not. Here's when I parked. Here's when I made the photograph. And I'm not paying you a dime. Uh, but we got back and uh, still wasn't noon yet, of course. And uh, we found uh, both of these were on the on the um, camper. <laughs> um, but they're really tight with it, which which actually is is pretty good uh, because it's just a huge problem there. When we left um, Tunnel View, 
when we got to a tunnel view, we got a place to park. We were very fortunate. We got a pretty good place. And a guy pulled up as we were on foot heading toward the viewpoint. Uh, he pulls up and he's going, he, he was coming toward us from the viewpoint and he swings in, finds half a spot uh, to park. He's got half his vehicle out in the highway. He's pointed the wrong direction in the lane and uh, he gets out and trots away with his camera. Well, when we headed back, I saw a park ranger sighting him and I hope he didn't get one of these little warning BS things. I hope he got the full big bucks fine. <laughs> I that think guy, I did. He was blocking the street. He was, you know, anyway, it was just bad news. So I was glad to see it. But yeah, it's a huge problem right now. And uh, like Cheryl said, I wouldn't go back and even consider fussing with um, uh, uh, Saturday, the, the the falls, the Horsetail Falls on a weekend. It just was it just was nuts. You couldn't get out of the park between six and seven. They literally closed the road, and if you had no, to get out, four, four and four to six, four to six. Yeah. Anyway, whenever it was, yeah, you, you you couldn't exit the park. You couldn't exit the park. The road was closed. Wow. Well. <laughs> no stopping, no parking, no dropping off, nothing. Get your ass in gear and get the hell out of here. That's what, basically what it amounted to. <laughs> and it's a mess, and I don't know what else they could do about it. You know, that's I don't know that what you could do is maybe say, it. okay, if you're going to be here, you need to have a pre registered pass to be in this location during these hours that day and limit the number of people there because it's just it's just a mess. And, and it was like, a joke. Yeah. Was you got tripod legs crossing tripod legs. Nobody can find a place. There's no place to park. There's, it's just, it's nuts. Well, it was uh, it okay wasn't too on, bad during the week, on the week, but yeah. uh, the weekend was just, that was horse manure. I wouldn't do it. So we might go back next year. And I don't know, I, you know, I've seen the falls, was I'm fabulous. photographs of it. And so, you know, maybe my perspective, perception of it is a little bit differently, but uh, I would not, you know, be that motivated to make a special trip to Yosemite Valley just to see Horsedale Falls. It's just... It's just, I don't. It's, it's I don't think amazing. I will ever go. But I have You know, I've seen it and I photographed it. So maybe that's it. But I hadn't seen it, hadn't photographed it. Maybe I would feel differently. Yeah, we've. I've seen so many pictures of it. I can't be bothered to go. Well, yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, and and that's where I'm talking about with the grand landscapes there of Yosemite Valley and some of the other popular places. We've Precisely. seen them a million times, and it doesn't mean you can't make a nice photograph of it. But I'm not really that motivated to put up with that kind of crap to photograph something that. You know, I, I've already seen and has been photographed probably better than, than the stuff I've gotten. Um, but it was, it was, it was just a mess, just a mess. But it is um, a special experience to be there when and witness it. Maybe not your photograph so much because it's just like any other photograph of the of the phenomena. But <laughs> but to actually be there um, is is special. Yeah, kind of like um, uh, the eclipse. It like all those other people. You know, I got <laughs> I made a few snapshots of the eclipse and they're nothing to get excited about, but the experience was cool. And and as I said, I think, you know, I, I might feel differently about Horsetail Falls if I hadn't seen it and hadn't put, had not experienced it. Maybe I'd be more motivated to, to pursue it again, but it, it was, it was a bloody mess. <laughs> okay, I have a so, question wow. about our, our field trips. Um, you know, usually we're taking them on a, um, on the weekend. Right. Um, I think most of us are retired or, or could make time during the week to go on a field trip. Am, am I correct about that? Or, or could, could well, we start doing more field trips in the middle of the week instead of um, weekends? I was um, trying to uh, entice Flop. What's that? We can't hear you, Penny. You can't we hear lost me? your audio. Now, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was trying to entice Flavio to come, and he oh. worked during the week. Oh, you got to take some time off, Flavio. <laughs> we did start the Yosemite Valley trip on a Thursday, Thursday and Friday, Saturday and we left Sunday, so that was available for people in, in the midweek, or well, during the week rather. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to share something. Yeah, go for it. Because <laughs> my other problem with going to Yosemite at that time of year is I don't like snow. It's <laughs> bloody cold out there. Yeah. Let me get I, I, rid of some of these things. 27 degrees, I think, one night when we were there. That's We've seen all these, Jim. Have you seen these? 
Yeah. I mean, uh, Tony, dude, if you don't like snow, you miss your 70 winter, which is absolutely stunning. All right. I want to be in a warm cocoon. To see it. To see it. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I've seen these on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, the, a lot of these have been on Facebook. I don't know if, because I don't show much color uh, at the club, so I thought I'd show some color uh, yeah. photos from Venice. I like the soft muted colors, I think, on the color palette on that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, there's a... Nice. This is at the. I really like that one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's at the Grand Canal. Uh, that's the Grand Canal behind. And uh, over here, over here on the right hand side is the where uh, the uh, Salute uh, uh, Church is. It's a it's a big uh, big church. There's another. That's a great spot for them. To pose. Yeah, that's pretty common. That's, that's a popular posing place. On uh, this is just off of St. Mark's uh, Piazza. That's Sorry. It's very intense. Yeah, yeah. Her stare, her eyes. G Jim, your shots with the overlays that you do. Uh -huh. uh, take a, a, a standard kind of like picture and make it into an art. Well, thanks. Yeah, that, that's what I tried to do. <laughs> I mean, if, if you did do this, it'd be like everybody else's pictures they were taking. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's great. Yeah, this is just a straight straight shot. There's no... Uh, yeah, no, you, no overlays at all. Yeah, yeah. Her face <laughs> looks like it's made out of China. <laughs> Oh, I, this is actually porcelain mask. A mask, okay. Yeah. No yeah. wonder. <laughs> yeah. I thought, boy, that makeup is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one one of the difficult one of the difficult things is because these masks actually s sit away from the face. Um, if uh, if you don't have the right light, uh, the the eyes are really dark. Uh, yeah. So uh, you, you have to. Uh, you have to enhance it in uh, Photoshop. You know, you have to lighten them up. But this, this was just, uh, uh, you know, un, un, I didn't do anything to the, to the eyes on this. Oh. That we saw that one in black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but a different. Uh, they didn't have the same background, uh, you know, stuff. This guy's been there forever. His name is. Um, Renee, I can't remember his last name. In this case, the infamous. Say what? That was me. Oh, I didn't. What, couldn't understand you. It was garbled. Uh, no, it was the CNN. Oh, I, oh. I just saw a reference to the Trump's golden calf. Ah, I hadn't seen it before, but the volume was high when I when I switched it on, so it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Two different uh, dresses. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. One of the he's one of the performers, obviously. Yes. This guy oh, was wild. It's Oscar Wilde. Yeah. <laughs> I, I made this with a hundred millimeter. He was just, I saw him walking towards me, and when he got in the right place. I made the photo and he was sort of unapproving of it. I was going to say, you didn't have to make that face and that, that's priceless. You want to get that one? Say, say what? Let's say he has a fag hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fag with fag. A fag, yeah, you got it right. That's right. <laughs> this picture will be banned in America today. This one? Yeah. No, no, this one, yeah. Oh, this one. <laughs> Why? Because there was a fag hanging out of his mouth. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Well, if you look at the statue of Lincoln sitting in the chair in the Capitol, uh, he, he's got his hands on two faggots. 
yes, which yes. Was the, which was the symbol that Mussolini uh, adopted for fascism. Well, faggot is is really at least um, it's, it's a really a, it's a bundling a uh, kin, kindling wood. It's a bundle of kindling wood. But it's with an axe. It's with but, an axe. But not in modern day America. It means something completely different. I know. <laughs> I know. Not not grinds faggots in. Yeah. <laughs> Bernard so probably knows what a faggot is. Yeah, well, uh, I, know various, I, know various, I know various meanings for it. And Talking it's, about the spicy meatballs. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, spicy meats balls. Yes. I, I made a, a number of photos of, of, this, uh, of this woman. She's just beautiful. Yeah, she is quite stunning. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with uh, this one was beautiful. Also, I only made a couple photos of her. The beauty spot. Yeah, yeah. And oh, this is uh, that's lovely. This is the Grand Canal, and I'm standing on the uh, Academia Bridge. That's a beautiful image. Jim. Well, thank you. I love the subtlety. And there's no overlay on this, is there? No. Yes. Yeah. No, wait. There may, I think there is. Yes, there is. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I can see it, it too it, now. It's very thin, if there is. It's, it's, it's a texture, not yeah. an overlay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's got beautiful. To see some texture. Yeah. Yeah, this is worthy of the uh, British painter Turner. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. 1830s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so I, I like, like the lights on the... And this the, the building on the uh, you know lower left or uh -huh. lower, yeah lower left right is that the brothel? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Jim, we'll ask you another question. Did you buy some broth there? No, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't buy soup there? Yes, I know. I hate to mention this, Jim, but all the buildings are leaning to the left. <laughs> oh, that's the way it happens. You know, that's the way Venice is. <laughs> including the uh, tower and the with the round top well boom i don't notice it it's a lovely picture yeah um this over here is uh peggy guggenheim's uh museum oh hey, the photographer voted for camel harris yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Once again, <laughs> leans to the left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very good. Uh, lovely. Yeah, this is uh, this is on this is on the not the Grand Canal. This is on the lagoon. Mm -hmm. I, I'm on a Vaporetto going over to um, to uh, Burano, Burano Island. Is that the graveyard? Yeah, no, no. Michelle is the graveyard, and that's that's just uh, that's to the left. It's an island. Uh, you you can see it from uh, from Venice proper. Yeah, the overlay is very effective. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my British red friend was saying when I talked to him last Saturday that uh, they were showing pictures of Venice when they had a really low tide, and all, uh -huh. the, all the the um, canals were empty. Yes, they were. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I haven't seen that. This one, this one you saw in uh, monochrome. Yes, we did. Yeah. Laundry day. Yeah. Hey, uh, laundry, or what do you call morning, it? Morning laundry is what I called it. Yeah. I love, I love it in color. Isn't yeah. It? Well, thanks. This is, uh, no, this, is the collapse, this is the collapse of civilization. As we right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one I also showed in monochrome. Is, is, is this called pro-Trump? I maybe. <laughs> Jim, I actually like this one better. That one better in color. This one? Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah, I do too, actually. I like that in better in color than the black and white version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do too, actually. But you know, I show monochrome in the competition. Well, yeah, because so. nobody else entered it. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this is the same. It's uh, from the Academia Bridge again just a different different shot probably a different year and then this one is this next one is really heavily overlaid oh yeah oh yeah very this oh, one much. this one lends oh, itself to poetry doesn't it yeah 
I wandered lonely as a cloud. So lonely you can't see him. And this is... Um, Words were <laughs> themselves. If you, if yes. right here between these two people, there's a walkway that goes down um, to the canal, and the hotel I stay in is down about halfway down that walkway, about 20, 25 yards down the, the walkway. And I think we always stay in the same place. Yeah. Now, here's some. Yeah, I always stay in the same. I've stayed in the same place for the last 10 years in the same, here, same here, hotel, here. hotel San Barnaba. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I don't know if you've seen any of these or not, but. Yes. Well, Tony, you've probably seen, you've probably seen them on Facebook. Probably, yeah. Where, um, where did you take that? I certainly haven't seen this at camera club competition. Yeah, um, this is at, at uh, Musée d'Orsay. Okay. And um, there was an exhibition of um, impressionist painters. Uh, there it was a big exhibition, and um, so I I, shot, I used a fifty millimeter lens and I just threw it slightly out of focus and then did some camera movement on it. Do you like it upset that you're taking photographs in these these galleries and museums? I'm sorry? Do they not get upset with you taking photographs in these art galleries and museums? It, it, it depends. They, they There was no problem taking them uh, at, at, you know, at this uh, exhibition. Yeah, because I know at the Guggenheim in New right. York, they got pissed off with me, and I didn't even take a fucking photo. Right, I know. <laughs> Accuse me of doing it. Yeah. yeah. And at the Edinburgh, they, they warned there was a guard at a certain section that said, you cannot take your cell phone out of your pocket here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, on this, this photo, this, uh, I painted this red in, just for emphasis, because I think, she, as I remember, she was wearing like a dark... Colored. Oh, that just really, that makes the image. Yeah, yeah, it, it really focuses you. Focus you. Show this one, definitely show it in color. Yeah, this, I, I don't make, I, this one's not monochrome. I've never made it monochrome. Um, so here's here's another one. The same thing with these, I added the it's, color it's, there. Yeah. Nice. And then this is just a slightly, oh. The, That's nice. Different, yeah. Well, this is the experience of an art gallery, isn't it? On yeah. a day. Exactly. So I wanted to try to emulate um, impressionist work with, with with this with this series. Yeah. yeah. Did a very good job of it. But the impressionist first exhibition was in a photographer's studio. First. Right. So that's the homage. And this is the last one in the in the in this group and this, again this is i painted these in you know digitally painted them in mm. and i think that's it yeah we go back that's to this very so. nice okay. Hi, jim beautiful thanks for sharing excellent Welcome. thanks yeah i'm glad you liked it yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> you're giving me the okay say this. okay the pals i will try and join you for the uh Pinnacles tour. Okay. I'm going to try, I'm going to, try and, I'm going to do that too. Tony and I and Jim are, I think we'll try and champion the, um, in the Oaken Forest Bazaar <laughs> situation theme. Yeah. And maybe we'll do that in April. That's yeah, I think good. Just need to um, choose a different time than uh, Rosie's going to set up for the machinery. Um, right, right. So, so give me a couple. Let of us days know when that is. For a couple. I mean, we can go into uh, Native Garden five days, you know, seven days a week. Um, it's local. It's very close. It's just a an afternoon exercise. Okay. And uh, we can get very creative. We'll, we'll try and give you guys ideas uh, about what we can do, or what you know, what you can bring and stage and. Yeah, it's going to be required that every everyone bring something uh, to the party. Did did you order your horses' heads, Jim? <laughs> I may do that. <laughs> Can you bring? We, we were heads? thinking about having people come in groups and and set up their own situation in groups, and then uh, after, uh, we wander around and photograph everybody's situation from different angles. <clears throat> 
but it's still life and, and it, 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 surreal, unrealistic things in an oaken forest. Right. Could you bring in special effects like smoke? Well, I guess, I guess okay. you could, you know, Bernard, if you could bring smoke without causing the forest to burn, well, yes. Well, I can't guarantee that. Well, then don't go. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to burn down the forest. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably too far for me to go in a, on a Saturday morning. We need to take string and stuff to tie this stuff up with. Yeah, and my suggestion is to use fishing line. Hammers and nails. No. No, no. Very thin fishing line. Cause it's get, fishing get yourself some. some... Mask out. Get get some three pound test fishing <laughs> line. All right, I will. <laughs> I kind of had an idea for a field trip. I don't know if it would work or not, but there's a wildlife refuge just um, adjacent to where you go in to Carrizo Plains off of 166 called the Bitter, yeah. Bitter Creek Wildlife Refuge. Okay. It's not open to the public, but they do tours. And what it is is it's where they have um, they have the condors, the California condors, and they've released them. Nice. So I don't know if there's actually anything out there to see or not, but I could research it if anybody thinks they might be interested sure. and find out if they would uh, give our group a tour of the place. Find out. We, we, we could do the Day of the Condor. That would be um, photographically. I don't know. It'd be really beneficial if they tied their legs to the rock so they couldn't fly away. Well, they they actually said even though the <laughs> the uh, the place is closed, you park on the road and you might see them flying overhead in that area. But we saw one. We I, maybe maybe I don't know. Oh. It was far away. <laughs> I remember that they were very very excited this summer, last summer, when condors showed up in Sequoia National Park. Oh, in Sequoia? Literally, there was a pair of them flying around and habitating Sequoia. So like, awesome. what? That would have been something to say. Well, they were releasing them out. Um, oh, there's a, there's a big refuge out here by East of uh, Figaro Mountain, but they found that they can fly down to the burger barn in Cuyama and get a free meal in the dumpster. Burger barn and get a burger? <laughs> <laughs> so they had to close it or make sure they kept them. Uh, they, they were absolutely dumbfounded when they showed up in the Sierra Nevada. I can imagine. That would be uh, very unexpected to see there. Which means they're spreading and they're expanding on their own. And I've never seen one of these things uh, up close other than in the Santa Barbara Zoo where they've got a couple of condors. We actually okay. saw them. You can see them if you go to the east side. Um, on the east side, we have seen um, them fairly close. But um, Bring some very oh. small children to attract the condors. You have to climb. If you, you'd have to climb really High mountain. high mountain and the the high peaks area, and sometimes they hang out up there. Not always. You'd have to get left. That's, that's a six miles. Six hundred millimeters. Yeah, from from yeah. We well, you know they've been time. feeding it for they've been feeding it for years. They put carcasses out for them, <laughs> and like two years ago, they actually the uh, biologists filmed one feeding on a carcass on the coast of Big Sur. Mm -hmm. And they were thrilled because it's the first time they've seen this in years. That the, because that's what they did. The condors fed on carcasses on the coast. And mm -hmm. they've been feeding them for years. And suddenly they had one who was actually eating a dead carcass on the coast and they're going, they're going like. They finally oh. found that they were. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. I'll look into it. I don't I don't know what I can find, but I'll let you guys know. 
I'll let Penny know. Yep. Well, uh, you know, we really enjoyed your book awful lot, uh, Elaine, when you shared it um, at the program meeting on the Carissa Plains. Uh, I think anytime you would like to lead a trip to go out there with the with the club that you would have a a big group interested to 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 uh you know take advantage of your knowledge of that area because it's a big place and if you just head out there you can get um uh, kind of overwhelmed with it so yeah well the, the thing with is it's, it's nice to go out there when there's an approaching wow. or receding storm. Yeah. But exactly. it's also a time when you don't want to go on those dirt roads. <laughs> so it's, it's kind well, of. Well, that's why I have a four wheel drive truck. Well, four wheel drive won't cut it's it. Not the answer. If it rains. Four wheel drive uh, won't help you much. You don't want to be out there when it rains. I'm going to show you a picture. Well, the thing is, we could have just a, a pop up field trip that would be like a one or two day notice and yeah. just do it. Go so out and see, see um, some of the interesting implements that have been left behind. We could do that, but it would have to be in a dry season. You, I mean, you'd, you'd yeah, want well, to do that when do. it wasn't particularly attractive in other ways, but yeah, we would right, be let, let me ask the following question. How many of you have been vaccinated? vaccinated? I, I have. I have, I've had vaccination number one. I have not, uh, I get number two on the 19th of the month. I come online every day and we have not been able to get an appointment yet. But. The right aid, the right aid. Well, I don't want to go to the drugstore. I'm, I'm being a little bit picky. I'd like to go. Why? I like the way Marion is organized and the way they're handling their, their clinic. And I've taken it and I know it's just a matter of time before they're going to take appointments. What happened was when, of course, you all know the state wanted to prioritize teachers and grocery store workers and uh, farm other workers. farm workers, other essential workers. So now that they've opened it up to 65 years and above, they still are not taking appointments for us because they have to now get these other essential workers first. Exactly. So, Which is why if you go to CVS, Rite Aid, Vons, or whatever, oh. you can get it almost immediately. Santa Maria. I what, did. In Santa Maria? Giving CVS. Last Friday, I, 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 I literally walked right in and got it vaccinated. Hmm. Well, maybe. But uh, I'm not really that worried about it. I know that they're going to open it up sooner or later, and we don't go anywhere <clears> anyway. So... Both of my kids have had their, both of their shots. My daughter-in-law got quite ill. Wait, wait, your kids are younger than you and they haven't had their shot. They have had their shot. They're teachers and they live in Oregon and Oregon prioritized uh, educators fairly early. So they, they okay. got them, they've already had their second shot. Uh, both my son and daughter-in-law had fevers. My daughter-in-law, um, Sound like she had a pretty high fever, but just for a day. My mom, when she had her shot, she didn't get a sore arm. Different, different she didn't. Uh, she didn't feel nothing. I mean, she was perfect, and she didn't even know she had a shot. But uh, she got the Pfizer. I can't say. I had the Pfizer vaccine. Pfizer. My kids get the Moderna. The next day, my arm was sore for about twelve hours. That's her better yeah, arm. And, and after that, your arm sore? nothing. Yeah, I said, isn't your arm sore? She says, no. She says, nothing. The needle's about two inches long. It's a very deep penetration. That yeah. needle is huge. And the next day, my arm was sore <laughs> all day, but no fever, no, no side reactions. I'm not growing any new appendages. <laughs> you are. <laughs> look, I think I'm are probably going to have the Johnson and Johnson available, so I don't know what we'll end up with. If we'll have it's the one there. shot, it's not as effective as the others, but it's probably effective enough. Yeah, looking for your appointment, Elaine. Oh, well, I I get um, notifications from the health department, and I have a phone number to call them, 
and they are giving me a list of the pharmacies that are taking appointments as well as the, the clinic at Marion. Right. Okay. But uh, what have you been? First at, we had our first at Marion. Um, and the second is not this Saturday, but the Saturday after. So the Pfizer, Pfizer or Moderna? Pfizer. Yeah. yeah, that's why I got Pfizer. So uh, I didn't even get a sore arm. I don't know how I missed that one. I've been asking and well, nope. just the, um, just the. Well, my uh, I've got just a lot of friends who are doctors and nurses, mm -hmm. and they're telling us that the the people the Moderna vaccine is really good. They're not bad mouthing it, but they're reporting that the second shot on Moderna. It's causing people to shut down for like 36 hours or more. Never bothered me. Well, my daughter-in-law only and my son both had that and they were uncomfortable and had fevers for probably 12 hours and then they were fine. Yeah, the, the so far the Pfizer hasn't hit me at all. Yeah. No, I had the Pfizer and uh, I've had both shots. In fact, CVS has done uh, both all of uh, Merrill Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they so got everybody at Merrill Gardens. We'd like chart. to go back and hold meetings there again. I know. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it would be better so everyone can speak. Uh, no, nothing, nothing. Don't worry. Oh, okay. So, Diane, did you get any reaction to the, sh the shots? When you uh, I had a... Uh, uh, um, I had it in about one o'clock, I think it was the first shot. And about 10 o'clock at night, I thought, oh, my arm is sore. You know, and it was kind of sore the next day. And then there was nothing. And the second shot thing, no oh. sore. I mean, there was soreness for about an hour or two, and that was it. That was um, it. No it, symptoms, it, no fever or anything. No, no. Oh, that's right. Do you, Diane, do you know if you had Pfizer or Moderna? Pfizer. That's what I'm saying the Johnson and Johnson might be a little more effective against the variant, but, but you know, I don't know. I think any shot is good at this point. Exactly. 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 Correct, Amundo. I had yes. the second Moderna yesterday, and today I started to feel incredibly sleepy, and so I went back to bed. <laughs> well, I was worried when my mom didn't have any. Well, Bernard, we didn't know any change. Because I thought, you know, you have to have some reaction to know that your body's doing something. <laughs> to yeah, build it's kind of dopey. Yeah. So, <laughs> see, that's cool. I think she even remembered she had a shot. I kept asking her, isn't your arm sore? And she no. I said, lift your arm up. Isn't it sore at all? No. She's going to be a party pooper, but it's almost 10 o'clock. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut off also. Yeah, yeah same here. So, all right. Bye. Bye. See everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.